Nebraska, the heartland, the center of agriculture in America. But in the fall, the only field that gets attention holds the crop of talent at Memorial Stadium, where the Cornhuskers have planted the seeds of tradition, hoping to grow a new dynasty, expected to harvest wins. The pressure falls on Nebraska as Wake Forest hits Lincoln hungry, looking to cultivate a winning season of their own. Tonight, the black shirts get their first big test. Wake Forest, Nebraska, next. September, the main attraction in Nebraska is Cornhusker football. Home games turn Memorial Stadium into the third largest city in the state. Tonight from Lincoln, Nebraska, CBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz kicks off now and it's the 270th consecutive sellout in Lincoln. Today it's the Big 12 in the ACC as Nebraska hosts Wake Forest. Hello again, everybody, along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thune. Now, last year, Nebraska had their worst season since 1961. Now, the fans all know it was a transition year. New head coach, new scheme, and I think they have to realize that was last year. They've got to move on. The question is, does Bill Callahan have the players, the skilled players, to make the plays in this West Coast offense? He does, Ron, and one of them is a holdover from last year, his senior captain and I back Corey Ross, who ran for over 1,000 yards last season while playing hurt. But he's got some cohorts now from the junior college ranks, receiver France Hardy and quarterback Zach Taylor. And they hooked up last week for nearly 22 yards per reception for Hardy and Zach Taylor finding his favorite target from Butler Community College, including a 73-yard connection between the two of them. I expect more of that tonight, Ron. Well, what they're also going to expect is a Wake Forest team that plays extremely hard. Now, they lost seven games last year, but six of those games were decided by a touchdown or less. Good running team, second in the ACC last year. They were good last week. They're expected to be better this week. That's because the offensive line is coming together, and they are committed to running the football. Not many teams in the country have one feature back. Wake Forest has two. One emerged last week, a youngster named Micah Andrews, son of former All-Pro William Andrews with the Atlanta Falcons. He runs a lot like his father, very strong inside, and he's durable. 34 carries. He ended up with 254 yards, a tremendous game for the youngster, despite the fact Wake did not win. But he'll get some help this week. Last year's starter, two-time All-ACC performer Chris Barclay returns from suspension, and he'll get a number of carries tonight. And don't, don't, don't forget this, Ron, he may return punts and kickoffs. They want to get him on the field. How physical, though, does Nebraska have to be in this football game? Oh, they're going to be very physical. They want to improve their offensive performance. But we've talked a lot of offense. Let's talk defense. The Black Shirts, 11 sacks last week, 18 tackles for loss. They want to stop the Wake Forest running game. If Wake Forest only averages three yards or less in running the football, there'd be a lot of smiles in Cornhusker land tonight. Well, the Wake Forest players told us yesterday they're not intimidated by Memorial Stadium, but Nebraska's got a pretty good record here. In fact, in the last 17 years, the record for the Huskers, 106 wins, just eight losses. Our host back in Atlanta, here's Ernie Johnson. EJ. 918 are inside Memorial Stadium, an absolutely perfect September evening, a strong win going from right to left in the 115th year of football here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Our third member of our broadcast team is Craig Sager. He has more on Nebraska's quarterback. Craig? Well, the path that has led Zach Taylor to Lincoln, Nebraska would confuse even Lewis and Clark. His father, Sherwood, played at Oklahoma. Zach was born and raised in Norman, dreamed of playing for the Sooners. But OU was loaded at quarterback, so he signed at Wake Forest. After two years in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, he threw only one pass. He lost his patience, decided to resurrect his career in El Dorado, Kansas at Butler Community College. Desperate for a veteran quarterback to run his complicated pro-style offense, Bill Callahan was amazed to find someone with a background, character, leadership, and motivation of Zach Taylor. 
Taylor. He may have been a Sooner fan. He might have even worn the Wake uniform. But today, Zach Taylor leads Husker Nation. Ron? All right, thanks, Craig. You can see the perfect weather, 86 degrees. There is a stiff breeze going from right to left in the stadium between 25 and 40 miles per hour. It is going to be an absolutely perfect night for college football. Nebraska won the toss. They have deferred because of that win. So Kevin Marion will go back, ready to receive the kick by Jordan Congdon, the true freshman out of San Diego, California. And Bill Callahan had great things to say about this young man yesterday. Congdon kicking with the win. Marion. He's going to have to bring that out at the one. Look out. The red jerseys will put him down at the two yard line. Blake Tietke on the stop. Now the Nebraska offense will look similar to USC's. Their quarterback is Zach Taylor, as Craig mentioned. Dad Sherwood played at OU, two years at Wake, junior college, second team All-American. He has got a good arm. They really like this young man. They think he's got a lot of guts and he's not afraid to run, Charles. Not at all, and when you see him in shotgun, a lot of times it will evoke memories of single wing tailback play because they'll snap it directly to him and he'll just run quarterback sweep. Don't be surprised if they just try and wedge it out as best they can right here, backed up near their own goal line. Yeah, they got two tight ends, Tarashinsky and Dan Callahan in the lineup. They'll go from the I formation, which is something that they'd like to do a little more of. They used to do it, but they have learned to live with just a one-back set. The key guy right off the bat, Ron, is the fullback right here. Belton. Richard Belt, number 35. He's got the lead from Mike Andrews. And he takes the handoff and he will go nowhere quickly. Let's take a look at the rest of that Nebraska offense or that Wake Forest offense on the line. Same names as last year, but a little more experienced. Steve Ballas, the junior out of Boardman, Ohio, second team all ACC last year. Wide receiver spot. They're going to need a big game from Chris Davis, one of two senior starters. Had six receptions last week versus Vandy. Six different players caught passes last week. On second and nine, Micah Andrews barely gets to the line of scrimmage. Right away, we're seeing that revamped Nebraska defense. 4 3, the famous black shirts, the line, we're seeing it right there, much improved, especially Lakeven Smith. He had a couple of sacks against Maine last week. The linebacking crew, however, lost Steve Octavian last week. He broke his legs, so Stuart Bradley, a former defensive end, will have to step up. Out of the secondary, only one starter returns. That's at the strong safety spot, Daniel Bullock. First season without his brother Josh, who's with the New Orleans Saints. Third down and nine. Grass is going to load up the line of scrimmage, Ron. You always hear about eight in the box. Don't be surprised if they run nine in the box and try and get them right here. They'll give it off. Andrews, nothing doing, gets up to the five. And right now, the Wake Forest is going to have to be punting into that stiff wind. And Nebraska should get great field, for, uh, field uh, position here. Now, Charles, here's the key. During warm-ups, we saw Wake Forest trying to kick into the wind. When they dropped the ball on the punt, it was moving. Remember Sean Landetta of the New York Giants in a playoff game a number of years ago, a famous piece of tape, dropping the football in a bad wind in Chicago, and the ball moved, and he almost, almost whipped on it. The good thing for Wake, they're all ACC punter two-time. Ryan Plackemeyer is back to kick the ball. They're counting on him to get off a good one. He's standing right on the end line. Nebraska does not rush. They know they're going to get a good return. Grixby right at the 45 yard line takes a hit and takes a seat. 38 yards on the kick. Pretty good effort into the win. And this Nebraska offense same as USC Zach Taylor the quarterback. He has done an outstanding job. They like this young man an awful lot. They said he's got a lot of patience back there. Saw his completion percentage from last week. He's hoping to throw that out of the minds of everyone. He's usually a very accurate thrower. Wants to chalk that up as a first game experience at Nebraska. Hopefully we'll see the true Zach Taylor tonight. They'll put it up on first and ten. First pass is incomplete. Got a little drop seat. And ten for Brandon Jackson. And the rest of the offense, they're looking for a little more intensity and effort from the line. They have three seniors on the line. Sepu Eboaye anchors at right tackle at wide receiver. Of course, Zach Taylor has a familiar face to connect with at France Hardy, the sophomore from Miami. The two played together in junior college. 
Nebraska spread it out on play one and threw the ball. Don't be surprised they come back and run the ball here now. This offensive line's been challenged all week to form some holes for their runners. Well, he's going to put it up into the flat. Pass is complete. Down to the 37-yard line. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. Terrence Nunn on the reception. The sophomore out of Houston, Texas. And the Wake Forest defense, they run a 4-3, but we're going to see a lot of people moving around. They need to put pressure on the Huskers. Matt Robinson led them in tackles for a loss last year. Linebacking, well, they lost a couple of starters to injury already this year. And Jason Pratt, the only senior with game experience. And in the secondary, they have two redshirt freshmen at the quarterback spot. Patrick G is the most dependable. Want a totally empty set on third and short. Third down will call a one. Taylor two-step drop slam over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Intended again for Terrence Nunn. So Nebraska not taking advantage of outstanding field position. Now will Bill Callahan go for it on fourth down? I think this is a good time to go for it, Ron, because of field position. There's the pass that Nunn's unable to come down with on third and short. Now it's fourth down. Here's why I say go for it. They've challenged their offensive line all week to be more physical and make holes for the runners. Here's a great spot for it, and your black shirt defense played so well last week, you're not quite as worried about field position. Now they're going to burn a timeout. They were one for three on fourth down conversions last week versus Maine. Zach Taylor wants to talk about it. We're going to take a timeout. We've played just about three minutes in Lincoln, Nebraska. We're scoreless. Facing fourth down, we'll call it just a shade over one. Three plays, three passes for the Huskers. Their first run attempt. Ross has an opening, crosses the 30, gets down to the 25-yard line. Patrick G on the stop, the junior out of Kingsport, Tennessee. We get our first look at Corey Ross, the senior out of Denver, Colorado. And Ron, did you hear the roar from the crowd? You know why? Not just getting the first down, but that's the Nebraska football these people recognize. Running the football in yeah. short yardage situations, powering their way through the offensive line. Nice alley for Ross to get to the corner, and then he turns it upfield with some determined running. Pickup of nine on the play. They only had 121 yards on 42 carries last week. Fans were not happy with that. Grant Mulkey goes in motion. They give it back to Ross. Going straight over the top of Kurt Mann, the big center. Picks up maybe a yard on the play. Zach Stukes, a sophomore out of Sprayberry High School in Marietta, Georgia, on the stop. They're high on this young man. They said he's physical, needs a little bit of strength, but they like his style, and he's only a sophomore. And what I liked about that last play was that Wake Forest's defensive line really didn't give ground. And number 41, linebacker Eric Berry, he met his opposite counterpart, number 41 for Nebraska, Dane Todd, right in the hole and stuffed the play. Second down and eight after the two-yard pickup. Play action. Taylor gets hit as he releases the ball. Pass is complete down to the 17-yard line. They got it to Clayton Seavers, the redshirt freshman out of Elkhorn, Nebraska. His third reception of the year. Good poise by Taylor. Watch the pattern. You're going to have two guys from right to left on your screen that he had a choice of throwing to. He found Seavers because of the pressure and got rid of the ball and was accurate enough for Seavers to catch it and go downfield and set up third and short. One thing to notice about a West Coast offense is you often have two receivers, not necessarily in the same area, but where you can see them in the same sight line. So you don't have a quarterback that has to look one way and then come back across the field for another receiver. Multiple receivers in his sight line. Now this is where Nebraska or Wake Forest has to step up. Get off the field on third down, and once again, they stop him, and it looks like Nebraska will have to go for fourth down. Brandon Jackson, the sophomore out of Horn Lake, Mississippi, stopped by Stanley Arno, the redshirt freshman out of Sunrise, Florida. Terrific job by the Wake Forest defensive front again. You mentioned Zach Stoops a couple of plays ago. He helped stop up that play, as well as number 59, Aaron Curry. Another decision for Bill Callahan and his folks on the sidelines, fourth and short. They're going to go ahead and try and play for six instead of three in this situation. That's uh, defensive coordinator Dean Hood in his fifth year. Second fourth down conversion already here in the opening quarter for Nebraska. And they'll go from the I formation. A little bit confused in trying to get their, their formation. They couldn't get set up where they wanted to be. Someone was in the wrong spot and they have to burn their second timeout. Well, you burned two timeouts, Charles. You've played less than five minutes. That's not good. But they will be facing another fourth down with about one to go. Still scoreless. 
Good look at 48-year-old Bill Callahan in his second year as head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Now, one of the things he wanted to do is make things simpler this year so guys can play and not think. Yeah, he's done that for his team, but by his nature, he's complex. Makes it hard for a defensive coordinator to prepare, and that one's going to be close. Brandon Jackson, the sophomore out of Horn Lake, Mississippi, again, who had a shoulder surgery during the spring, lowered his head, but Jason Pratt went right underneath everybody to try to make the stop, and they're marking it. Looks like it's going to be short. And the officials may not even measure this. Well, they are. They're going to take a look. Our referee tonight is Joe Ryder. Bill Callahan, two years as head coach of the Oakland Raiders, one Super Bowl appearance. You know, talking to him about that big offensive line and the small defensive line. He said, listen, I remember when Tampa Bay played us in the Super Bowl. Doesn't make any difference, and they didn't move anybody there. No, Stanley Arnoux, number 43, great penetration on the play. Submarined himself into the backfield and really stacked things up for Brandon Jackson, and Wake Forest has held. Now, Wake Forest, Jim Grove. The head coach has done an outstanding job. Four and seven last year. Lost to Vanderbilt last week. But Grove has done a great job as building this program from the ground up, trying to get a lot of young players. That's why you're going to see a lot of freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and sophomores this football game. One point he always likes to make. We may be young, but this is the most talented group of individuals he's had at Wake Forest. As they continue to mature and grow up, They'll play that much better. Well, a lot better field position than when they started the game after the kickoff. Micah Andrews had the big game last week. Let's take a look at tonight's Orbit's fast and easy keys to the game for Wake Forest first. Well, they want to get off to a quick start because they knew coming in Nebraska would play with a lot of passion after their performance against Maine last week. So far, so good. Get off the field on defense on third and fourth downs. They just got a fourth down stop. They want to run the ball and control the clock using Micah Andrews and Chris Barclay. Well, you got to love it when you get six yards on first down. And they'll go back to Andrews. Just lowers his head and he'll get the first down. Andrews with that 254 yards on 34 carries last week. He was quite the workhorse. He doesn't have that second gear like Chris Barclay has. He says he calls himself a sloppy runner. <laughs> sloppy, but sometimes with sloppy, it works out pretty well. And there's Chris Barclay, the all ACC running back on the bench right now. He'll get his opportunity soon enough. But going back to Andrews, he's a strong runner inside and physical. And you're right, Ryan, doesn't run away from people, but doesn't mind running over them, too. Benjamin Mock changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Andrews skips up and again six, seven yards on first down. Daniel Bullock's coming up to make the stop from that strong safety spot. Doesn't this shorten the game for Wake Forest if they're able to be successful running the football? If they're able to do that, you take time off the clock, and you've also rewarded your defense, who just gave you a tremendous fourth down stop deep in their own territory. That gets them a break, a chance to sit on the bench and luxuriate in their accomplishment while your offense goes out and runs things. This is a nice start for Wake Forest. This is what they do best is running the football. Nebraska now with seven on the line of scrimmage. Belton's the fullback. Seven to snap, plenty of time. Looks like Nebraska jump, but so did Wake Forest. We have a bunch of penalty flags on the field. A lot of pointing at each side. Let's see who the officials decide. Pause right the, the penalty. Snap. Ball start. Number 79 on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Matthew Brim, now these penalties really hurt Wake Forest last week. Really hurt him in the red zone against Vanderbilt. They had a chance to go in. Matthew Brim, number 79, starting offensive guard, got off to too quick of a start. Seven penalties, 65 yards. Vanderbilt only two for five. And Wake only lost the game by four points. Penalties always important. Could be another one right there. Oh, my. Oh, you're playing with a lot of young players, and Jim Grobe saying that it's hard to make sure they keep their attention for four quarters of a football game. Well, Lakeven Smith jumped a little bit across the line, and Matthew Brim came up in the pass block. Hold it. Did he break the plane? And now they're talking about did he, if he broke the plane, it'll go against okay, Nebraska. If not, it'll be against that's, Wake. That's on them, then. 96. 96. Yeah, we know what it is already, Mr. Ryder. Don't have to tell us. Okay, that's Titus 96. Adams. So I said Lakeven Smith, Titus Adams, number 96, going to get the, the finger pointed at him for the penalty. Oh, yeah. Right there. You saw, saw him hand. jump. 
Officials on the spot. But there goes their penalty free streak. That's right. Open the game, open last against Maine. No penalties. First time since 1997. A game against Texas Tech then. Well, we're back down to second, and we'll call it three. Andrews gets another first down. Just grinding away with that offensive line that's not exceptionally big. They're just doing a good job. And you know, you talk to other coaches in the ACC, you say, we don't like playing against this offensive line. These guys are scrappy. Very physical. Watch how they block this way, this way, this way. Give Andrews the cutback lane here. They're trying to give him that natural cutback against the green. See how they block down? And then bring him outside and give him an opportunity to roam. One thing they need, better blocking out wide from their wide receivers. So that when Andrew right. and Barclay get to the third level, they'll have a chance to get more yardage. This time the Nebraska defense is up to the challenge. Stops him right at the line of scrimmage. Micah Andrews goes nowhere. The sophomore out of Duluth, Georgia. Greater Atlanta Christian High School. And as Charles mentioned, his dad was a pretty good football player in his own right. <laughs> he could rumble a little bit for the Atlanta Falcons at all pro William Andrews. The proud Auburn graduate must love watching his son run the football now. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Nebraska again showing seven, eight in the box. I think they're looking to try and get some pressure now. It's not, you don't just blitz all the time in pass situations. You want to get pressure on the passer, but sometimes you run blitz too to, stay, to, to shore up the lanes. Nebraska showing that run blitz. Here they come. Mock looking to set up the screen, and he's got it. Up over the 45 to the 48-yard line is Nate Morton, the junior out of Harlingen, Texas. Now we did the keys for Wake Forest. How about taking a look at the keys for the Nebraska Cornhuskers tonight? Well, first off, they want to stop the run. They know that's Wake Forest game. The first series they did well. So far, Wake is moving the ball. They want to stay on schedule on offense. First and 10, gain four yards or more so they don't get behind in their play calling and use the punt return game. So effective against Maine to aid them in field position tonight. Benjamin Mock on third and five. Here comes Nebraska. Scrambling. He can be dangerous. Intercepted. It's going to be seven points for the Huskers. Corey McEwen. Yards on the return for Corey McEwen, the sophomore out of Naperville, Illinois. His first collegiate interception. And he takes it to the house. Back-to-back -back weeks, Ron, of a Nebraska linebacker picking off a pass and running it in for a touchdown. Last week, Bo Rude against Maine. This week, Corey McEwen. Well, Tom didn't miss an extra point last week. Got this one to go through. The 38-yard touchdown on the interception. Benjamin Mock tried to force that ball, and he pays for it dearly. 6.24 left in the first. The Huskers lead it by a touchdown. The game, very instinctive. That instinct just led to a touchdown, and Nebraska leads 7-0 here in quarter number one, along with Craig Sager and Charles Davis. Ron Thulin with you. Well, Chris Barclay, who was suspended for breaking team rules last week in the game against Vanderbilt, is back in action. Led the ACC in rushing a couple of times, and the coaches said we need help back there on our kickoff return. They were last in the ACC last year in that category. We're going to see what he can do as far as uh, taking it back, and I think it has to be an adjustment. Just trying to get him into the game. He didn't practice a whole lot. It's interesting because of what you just said. They had a lot of time to kill because they couldn't get him ready for the Vanderbilt game. He wouldn't be playing. So what do you do? You send him back to try and catch some kicks. He's never caught kickoffs or punts in his life. They said he was very natural back there doing it. Such a tremendous athlete. Let's see if he can spark Wake Forest with this return. Green's going to have to hold it because of the win. Condon gets it. Barclay. And he too drops it into the end zone. He tries to take it out. Oh, my. They're going to mark it at the one-yard line. What was he thinking? The inexperience showed up in a hurry. Sometimes being a senior doesn't matter if you've never done it before. And he went back there, 
and he panicked when he dropped the ball here. He didn't realize all he has to do is pick it up and put a knee down. Guys who've done it before do that. But also the anxiousness of Chris Barclay, who didn't play last week, Ron, I think showed up on this play. Didn't play his first action. He wants to do something positive. Instead, it's a monster negative for his offense. Well, their first possession, they started out about the two. Their third possession, they start out on the one foot line. Here they come. Everybody's coming right now trying to get a safety against Wake. Benjamin Mock, the sophomore out of Kenton, Ohio, will just put the head down, wisely just hold on to the football. <laughs> when you come into this house, you cannot have a big margin of error. I mean, you cannot make mistakes like that if you expect to win. No, and you just threw an interception as a return for a touchdown, so now you've got the crowd excited. You've got the black shirt defense of Nebraska very excited. Good call by Steve Lobotsky, the offensive coordinator, just try and wedge it out and get some room and try not to make a mistake here. And they'll keep it on the ground again. Like that Andrews tries to get up till about the three-yard line where he will be stopped. How much is it you think that Barkley, if you look at Kevin Cosgrove, the uh, defensive coordinator for Nebraska, how much is it for Barkley, though? You, you sat out, you felt like you let down your team last week. You tried to do too much. I think that's what we saw in the kickoff return because the coaches all told us he's a tremendous young man who made a mistake. He's not been a guy who's been in trouble all the time. So he felt as if exactly what you said. He let his team down and he tried to do way too much on that kickoff return. Nebraska showing that run blitz. They hand it off to the fullback Belton and he trips his way up to the 10 yard line. He actually will be about a half a yard short of the first down. Almost got it. Needed about another step. But at least they give some room for Plackemeyer to kick it away. Well, Nebraska very fortunate on that one because they overran the fullback headed towards the tailback. They wanted to get to him to try and make a big play. Fullback had it inside and slipped past them. If Belton had been able to keep his feet, could have gotten them a crucial first down. How do you like this spread formation on the punt for Wake Forest? Boy, very interesting. It's interesting, but what it does is it keeps Nebraska from loading up inside because if you do, you fake it and throw it to someone out wide. Well, his first effort was 38. This is even better into a stiff win. Richby drops it at the 40, and he is going to be down to the 42-yard line. A 49-yard kick into the win for Van Plakemeyer, the senior out of Bonsall, California, who didn't have a good game last week against Vanderbilt. Watch here. This is the back, Mike Andrews. He's going to want to run a screen over here. But what happens is he gets knocked down by Lakeven Smith inside the defensive tackle. Great play right there. You see Smith knock him down. Now Mock has nowhere to go with the football. Panics, and instead of just holding on to it, he throws it right there. That was the center, Stephen Justice. That was not Mike Andrews who he was trying to hit. Jack Taylor, the deep out, passes incomplete, intended again for Terrence Nunn. One of the things that Nebraska offense really wanted to work on was consistency and efficiency in first and ten. They really needed to improve that, but they've been throwing a lot on first down. And, you know, old-style coaches say, you know, if you put the ball in the air, three things can happen. Two of them are bad. That's well, that's exactly not right. Bill Callahan's philosophy. The first series, they had a couple of drops on passes that should have been completed. So don't think that he's going to go away from his nature here in this football game. Now, Corey Ross. Dances his way up over the 45 to the 47 yard line. The man they nicknamed Pork Chop. Last year, he came in 28 pounds less than he was in 2003. He came in as a little scrawny little guy, got up well over 200, down to 195 now, and that's really helped him losing that weight. It's only made him a better football player. Strong, compact, speedy, and shifty at 195. He gets up over 200, he loses the speedy and shifty. And that play, it aided him because he stood the tackle there by Pratt, Jason Pratt, and went for positive yardage. On third down, Taylor, the quick slant it, incomplete, looking for a penalty flag, and they're not going to get it. Lieutenant again for Terrence Nunn. And I don't think they should get a penalty flag. I think that was nice coverage by Alfonso Smith, number 11. Watch Smith breaking on the football on the slant. He never retreated, saw it, gets him around the hips, but about the same time the ball is going through Nunn's hand. I know the crowd wanted a flag. I don't believe one was warranted on that play. Well, just what Wake Forest wanted to do, they wanted to get off the field on third down. Nice defensive effort there for Wake Forest. Idle.
Cook with his first punt of the evening. Fits his own player, and Wake Forest will get a lot better field position than they had the last time. Brandon Ringoni looked like he got a little piece of that. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Well, Wake's defense playing fairly well despite the fact they do not have their all ACC linebacker John Abadi. He has a sore hamstring, did not practice all week. However, he did make the trip. He did warm up out here today. He told me he wants to play. He is dressed and he's been begging the coaches to get out there. So far, we have not seen any action, but he is their fastest player and perhaps one of the strongest players in the country. They obviously could use him. Now the sophomore out of Powder Springs, Georgia Harrison High School. He is a real spark plug in there when he's at that middle linebacker spot. Benjamin Mock rolling, trying to throw across his body, and this is going to be swatted down. He was being chased by Corey McEwen, who already has that interception for a touchdown. Also, Stuart Bradley right there to help him out. I think what's happening to Wake Forest is that their coaching staff has told us that this is the fastest group that they've had. But I believe Nebraska may be faster on defense. The yeah. pressure and the penetration getting back to Benjamin Mock is awfully quick. He's having no time. He's had no time to set up in the pocket and deliver a pass. And they wanted to improve the pass game over the summer so he gets rid of it quicker. Richard Belton, the only one in the backfield with Mock. He's going to put his head down and take it. He's got a little running room. Pump fakes over the 25 up to the 27 yard line and he's shoved out of bounds by Bullocks. That's one thing that Benjamin Mock's not afraid to do. He said if I was going to slide I would have been a baseball player. He doesn't <laughs> mind taking the hit. Yeah, not many quarterbacks like that are there and this one was designed to run the whole way. All the formation to the top of your screen fake it out there. He came back to the short side on a designed run and gained nice yardage setting them up for third and short. Third down and one. Belton over the left side gets over the 30 yard line. That'll be good for the first down. They'll be brought down almost to the 31. Bullocks again coming up in that strong safety spot. Deke also right there on the stop. Bullocks is all over the field. The most he's a little bit more physical than his brother Josh. I know Josh is watching, member of the New Orleans Saints, but Daniel's a little more physical. Sorry, Josh. Don't you think? <laughs> Daniel's always been that type of a player. I think Daniel was the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He played in high school and, and has been, been real, a real force for this team quietly, except for when he's on the field. He packs a wallet when he comes up from the strong safety position. But that was a big first down round for Wake Forest. Huge. Andrews gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. He has the ball taken away by Bullets. Touchdown, Nebraska. We just talked about J uh, Daniel Bullocks, and he was on a run blitz. Built from a strong safety position, secured the tackle, and then with great strength, wrenched the ball from the hands of Micah Andrews, who didn't give it up at all last week against Vanderbilt, despite 34 carries. Gave it up in a key situation here, and a six points for the Huskers. Bullocks takes it in. Nebraska with 33 yards of offense, but they already have 13 points, about to make it 14. I think what we're seeing early in this game, the benefits of spring practice where they began their turnover takeaway circuit. Every day as they start practice, they work, they work on stripping the ball, intercepting the ball, getting on fumbles, and tackling. And it is paying off for Nebraska. The black shirts appear to be back. They had no defensive touchdowns last year. They already have a couple here tonight. The extra point. Cook is good. Well, as Charles mentioned, the point of emphasis was creating turnovers. They were ninth in the Big 12 last year, only 21 turnovers, 26 fewer than 2003. See how he came up? It was a run blitz called by Kevin Cosgrove to fill the gaps. He secures the tackle, and then what a great play. And that comes from the emphasis that you just mentioned, Ron, that they put on in spring practice about creating turnovers and takeaways. And twice tonight, They've had takeaways and both times resulted in touchdowns. Well, you can see there's been a tradition of brothers here. Of course, Chad and Chris Kelsey, Grant and Tracy Wistrom. 
the Peter brothers, Weigert, and Mike and Andy Keeler. Daniel and Josh Bullets, back-to-back -back seasons. Josh could be here for this year. The yep. twin brothers went out early to the NFL draft, the second-round pick of the New Orleans Saints. I believe Mom is here to watch Daniel play tonight and is heading to Carolina for the Carolina Panthers-New Orleans right. Saints game tomorrow. Well, you can see what the Blackshirt defense did last year. They only allowed six yards, or last week, they only allowed six yards rushing. Tonight so far, Wake Forest has 49 yards rushing. But Kevin Cosgrove was very proud of his defense. He's their third coordinator. When he took over last year, their third coordinator in three years. And the kids were a little confused about everything. And there was a little resentment. There was some infighting on the defense. They've got it together, though. You don't change parents every year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Right? Without expecting some type of resistance or pushback from the kids. They felt that things were pretty good before. They loved Bo Pelini as their defensive coordinator. He was gone. They thought he might be their head coach. When that didn't happen, now you get a new staff. Takes time to build trust among the players. I believe we're seeing the trust That's right. this season. Now they're giving Barclay another chance, and this kick's going to be a little bit short. He'll take it at about the nine. Straight ahead. He almost lost the football as he got over the 25-yard line to the 27-yard line, a return of 17 yards. Daniel Bullock's brother is Josh. We talked to him about Brother Daniel. I'm Josh Bullock. I was a 2003 University of Nebraska All-American safety. Now I am a New Orleans Saints. My twin brother, Daniel Bullock, still roams the defensive backfield for our hustle. He played football, basketball, baseball, track, and a little bit of bowling. I just want him to just go out there and focus on being the best football player he can be. I mean, every memory was just like a great memory. We'd be on the same team. I mean, that's, that'd, be like, that'd be like the perfect gift. <laughs> you hear that front office <laughs> in New Orleans? It. I love it. <laughs> that little subtle hint there. Nebraska again putting eight in the box. Barclay in it running back, and there's some of the shifting moves that got him over 1,000 last year. Gets up to about the 39-yard line, a pickup of 11 on the play. Late TT on the stop. That is a first down for Wake Forest. This is what Chris Barclay provides that Micah Andrews may not. The ability to make people miss and create space where there is none. Nebraska had another run blitz on. Eight or nine guys coming up to try and fill lanes. He made two guys miss and ran for a first down. That's powerful stuff and makes the defense a little more hesitant as they go after a runner. Mock into the flat, passes drop in the hands of Chris Davis, who had slick hands last year, the senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. They were really hoping he would get consistency. We do have a penalty flag on the play. And right here, Stuart Bradley, 34, takes away the tight end. John Tarashinsky, 89, but Chris Davis is open and the ball is perfectly thrown. You have to help your team out by coming down with catches that should be made. Well, the penalty is going to go against Nebraska, and it'll be holding. Nebraska had no penalties, as we mentioned last week. Averaged about seven a game last year. Number 55 on the defense on an eligible pass receiver. Ten yards, automatic, first down. You remember Lakeith and Smith knocking down mm -hmm. Mike Andrews in the backfield? Wally Muhammad, a defensive lineman, may have tried to do the same thing and got caught holding the receiver instead of just knocking him down. I mean, I make it sound too easy. Oh, just go back and knock yeah, him just, down. Yeah. It's not that easy. We know that. This time he got caught trying to keep a receiver from getting into a pass route. First and 10 for Wake. Just go right on top of midfield. Off on a little delay. Barclay again picks up five on first down. Stop by Corey McEwen. Pierre Green also coming up to help on the stop. Now Barkley is a senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, male traditional high school. First team all ACC last year, a couple of seasons, over 1,000 yards rushing. So you've got this power back in Micah Andrews, then you have the shifty back in Barkley. Not a bad one-two combination. That looks like Brim, number 79. Second time now. Matthew Brim's come out of his stance and started early. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 79 on the offense. Five yards, 
still second down. Charles, let's talk about how Jim Grove's offense works. It looks like they're they're confused when they get to the line, but that's all part of it. Talk about the, the, the play calling and what goes on up there. What they do is they come up to the line of scrimmage and they start to initiate things, hoping to get Nebraska's defense to move around and show their coverage and their defense. Then after they do that, they look to the sideline sometimes and get a check. Or Benjamin Mock makes a check. See, right now he's surveying. Likes what he sees, going to go with the play. And he's going to keep it. Skips up inside the 50-yard line, down to the 46-yard line. Bo, Bo Rude on his first stop of the night. Another designed run in the last play, but watch Chris Barclay, the senior, trying to get Brim into the ball game. Just because Barclay missed the last game doesn't mean that he still <laughs> doesn't provide leadership for his team. And he's just trying to get young Matthew Brim locked and loaded in this ball game. Let's go, man. Let's go. Third down and six. I like seeing that. That's pretty good. I like that. Senior leadership. You got it. Nebraska's showing four. They bring five. They bring six. Here come the black shirts. Mock scrambling away. Looking. This time he's going to just walk out of bounds. He was running for his life. That time he didn't try to force the pass. Much better job by Benjamin Mock realizing let's not throw it up for grabs. But Corey Randolph was running downfield number 17. I think Blake Tiki, number 25, the free safety, had a little extra cloth yeah. that went undetected and helped take away that play. They're trying to set up a screen, and the black shirts were all over it. Well, you can see Plakamar has done a nice job tonight. Average just almost over 48 yards. Courtney Grixby is standing back on his own 15 yard line. Definitely setting up for the return. They have two blocking backs back there to try and cover the field on the punts. Line drive shot gets Grixby back to the 10 yard line, and that's where he's going to be hauled in. Excellent coverage by Wake Forest. 42 yards on the kick. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson with a little Florida update. EJ? Yeah, highlights and scores coming up at halftime. Keep you posted on everything on the bottom portion of your screen. Keep an eye out. Deshaun, <laughs> Deshaun Wynn didn't play last week. The season opener. Looks like the head coach got his attention, doesn't it? I think he did. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 11 for the Huskers. Still looking to get something going offensively. Taylor going deep. The man is covered. Incomplete. Pass was intended for France Hardy, his junior college teammate. We do have a penalty flag in the backfield. Riley Swanson, the junior out of Fayetteville, Georgia, who also didn't play last week. Yeah, they're calling rough in the passer. He was on the coverage. That's too bad. You see Jim Grobe, the head coach over there. That negates a nice coverage downfield. A good play for Wake Forest, not fooled by the play action. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Number 98 on the defense. 15 yards, automatic. First down. Sometimes when you're young, you're too, too enthusiastic, and where he got him was arm up in the shoulder pad head area. You're going to get flagged for that every single time. Well, third penalty already for Wake Forest here in the opening quarter. They trail 14-0. The coaches like the effort of Jeremy Thompson, just not the actual execution of what he did. Cost him 15 yards and an incompletion. Taylor goes into the flat. Pass is incomplete at the 33-yard line. Isaiah Flewellen was the intended receiver. Josh Gates on the coverage. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Napa. Once again, the first and 10 line is yellow. The line of scrimmage is orange. So you can tell how far they have to go. One of the things I'm observing early is that Wake Forest is just as physical as Nebraska. They haven't executed as well in all aspects. They'll strike you. Taylor likes that pass into the flat. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Didn't have a chance. It looks like Matt Robinson, the sophomore out of Cedartown, Georgia, is the one that got the hand on it. I'll tell you, this Nebraska offense is not really well oiled right now. They only have 33 yards. Two defensive touchdowns have given them this 14-0 lead. I watched Notre Dame and Michigan earlier today. Notre Dame did a great job with their pass, with their pass rush, but they couldn't get to the quarterback of getting hands up into the throwing lanes. And they batted back six or seven of Chad Henney's passes. Another example of that right there by Wake Forest and Matt Robinson. Well, third down and ten. Wake brings five. Taylor is going to be hit. We have a penalty flag in the backfield, and that probably will be holding against Nebraska. It looked like 
Cornelius Fumata Thomas was grabbing onto anybody that was around him. And I think Jeremy Thompson, number 98, who received, who got the penalty a couple plays ago, yeah. he was the one who forced this one. Great job by Thompson coming back on the rush. Now Nebraska now 0 for 3 on third down possibilities. These fans are going to get a little restless on this offense. They're used to a lot of points being scored and a lot of yards being put up. Holding, holding number 79 on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. And that's the way the first quarter will end. So Nebraska, an interception for a touchdown. Bullocks strips the back for a touchdown. And Nebraska has a 14-0 lead after the first 15 minutes. Round of the field here, the Tom Osborne field. You can see the alternating green, light green, dark green. Barclay is set at the 40-yard line to return this punt. High snap, Wait, puts a rush on him. Is there a penalty flag? Yes, it'll be a roughing call. And there's a fumble besides that. This play is a mess, and another penalty flag goes down. This play was doomed from the start. We might have a roughing against Wake yeah. and a kick interference call against Nebraska. This could be interesting because of where he threw the penalty flag. I'm wondering if they interfered with the punt returner. I think you did. I think you're right. Which may negate <laughs> Wake's gift to them. Well, Joe Ryder has to figure this out. Better him than me. Yep. Sam, why he's wearing stripes. That's right. Sam Cook did a nice job on that high snap just to get it off. Ron, how come a referee gets to wear a white hat when everyone <laughs> in the state, half the stadium's always mad at him anyway? <laughs> I guess he needs all the love he can get, that's right? That's exactly right. The good right. guys always have the white hat on as they ride into town. He's got a good crew around him today. Let's listen in. Running into the kicker on the receiving team. Personal foul. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick on the red team. Billy's offset. We play the down. So you see Cook trying to get off the kick. And right there, it looks like number 20, Chris Vaughn, coming across the front of him. And then on the other end, that's going to be, oh, it's going to be Brandon Ragoni, number 24, their special team specialist who got too close to Chris Barclay on the return and negated what looked to be a nice play for Nebraska, a gift that Wake Forest had handed them. They went ahead and handed it right back. Well, here's, here's part of the problem that uh, Nebraska had. They used two timeouts in that first quarter. They would have probably, if they would have had more than one, used a timeout so they could kick with the win. Right. But they had to let the, the clock run down. Now they're kicking into the win. And really all we're doing is the same play over again. Well, Willie Idolette is now standing at a 40-yard line. They got Barclay out of there. This is a kick that just holds up into the air. He's got to talk to his team so the ball doesn't bounce and hit one of his guys blocking. And it'll be down in Nebraska's territory. Only a 26-yard kick by Sam Cook. Well, tomorrow TNT presents the NBA Players Hurricane Relief Game as the NBA's biggest stars come out to support the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Don't miss Kobe, LeBron, and the game's greatest players as they do their part to join in the healing and give you an opportunity to give as well. That'll be tomorrow night at 11 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, only on TNT. Our Craig Sager will be at that game. And what a great thing, the NBA players coming together to try and help our fellow citizens suffering from Hurricane Katrina. DJ Kenny and Charles will take that studio show, put it back on the air. Kenny Smith, the driving force behind that game. Two tight ends. And Nebraska's defense just fights right through the blocks. Great job by Wally Mohammed, the super out of Bluefield, New Jersey. He brings so much energy to this defense. And they never moved him off the line of scrimmage. It was, yeah. a, it was zone blocking by Wake Forest. And one thing I've noticed about Wake, they're rolling offensive linemen in and out of the game. I'm not sure if that's normal for them. You know, a lot of times you want your offensive line to get a rhythm together. But there was up to two or three guys on almost every play. Benjamin Mock, who was an outstanding high school quarterback, played for his dad. Straight drop, throwing down the middle, and it's going to be picked off his second interception. Blake Teedke up over the 35, still on his feet, crosses the 40 up to the 44-yard line. 27 yards on the return. Benjamin Mock threw the pass. His receiver wasn't even looking for it. 
But what do they tell us all the time? Communication is the key to success. Look at his receiver right there, number 83, Nate Morton. He wasn't even looking for the football until way too late. Benjamin Mock put it up in the air thinking that Morton would do one thing. Morton was thinking another. And the beneficiary, Blake Tiedke, the former walk-on, now starting free safety for Nebraska. Well, another turnover, and Nebraska's going to try to capitalize on that. But the offense is Corey Ross getting stopped. Maybe picked up a yard out of the play. You know, this is a Nebraska offense that last year it wasn't what they were doing, but how they were doing it with this West Coast offense, wasn't it? I love the scheme. They just weren't executing it the way that Bill Callahan and his staff wanted it done. And right now, they're not executing in the run game very well. The pass game I see coming together. They've had a few mm -hmm. drops along the mm -hmm. way, but the run game, they're not they're not creating the holes for these running backs to run through right now. And the I formation, toss back to Ross. Looking for some room, and he's going to be stacked after picking up three. Jason Pratt Boy, doing a nice job from that linebacker spot, the senior out of Hickson, Tennessee. And I like Bill Callahan's philosophy. He says, we're going to take what we want, not what the defense gives us. And I think a guy named John Gruden likes that <laughs> philosophy, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and I've been a big advocate of that philosophy because you can't always just settle. Otherwise, the defense will dictate. As we look at our split box there, Joe Gans, the backup, Joe Gans the backup, checking out what the play call is, trying to follow along and put himself in those situations in case he has the play. I think they jumped. Now they're 0 for 4 on third down. Nebraska tried to do something about that, but people were jumping. It may have been Greg Austin, number 65, getting those two, mm -hmm. 290 the pounds snap. in motion. Ball start, number 65 on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Hey, if you get 300 pounds started, there's no recall. <laughs> it's downhill, right? <laughs> I mean, it's downhill. You might as well go ahead and complete the yeah. mission. Let's check in with Craig Sager, who's with Zach Taylor's parents. Craig. Well, Ron, we mentioned Zach's curious route to Lincoln, Nebraska. Of course, growing up in Norman, Oklahoma, where his father Sherwood played for OU. He's sitting behind me along with his wife, Julian. What's it like to root for Nebraska? Well, we just say go Big Red. It all means the same. Talk about Zach's performance right here. That wasn't a good play because we just threw the interception. Oh, now they ruled it incomplete. No, it's great. It's, is that Zach laying down? Oh, no. Not a good time to talk to Zach's parents. Obviously, you're under a heavy rush, let the ball go up, and now he's being attended to. So we'll let them watch their son as being helped off the field. Take it back to you, Ryan. Well, I'll tell you what, Sherwood Taylor was a heady player, but uh, you can only imagine what's going through Sherwood and Julie's mind right now. Son is down at the 35 yard line. And he's not alone. No, Corey Ross player. is also there. Two guys who are pretty indispensable to their offense. Let's hope that they're both okay. Let's see what happened, Charles. See, Ross is pass blocking. And Ooh. right there, what oh, is he his stuck? Head. And he rolled up into Corey Ross, number four, who was pass blocking. Big time hit came on the rush there from, from uh, Wake Forest. Really smacked him. And knocked him right back into Corey Ross, who was trying to block for him. Well, Taylor's walking off. Gans is the backup quarterback, the redshirt freshman. He's uh, over there throwing, taking snaps, just in case. Let's see if this was caught. It looked like it was, uh, must have hit the ground. It did. Yeah, right there. See that? You see the black stuff coming up yeah. out of the turf. Good try by Alfonso Smith, number 11, trying to get his hands underneath, but an excellent call by the officials. There's Joe Gans warming up just in case, but Nebraska did not convert the third down, so they're going to have to kick it away. 12-11 to play in the first half. Nebraska leads by a couple of touchdowns. Conference titles, five national titles, trying to get back into prominence, but right now their defense has more yards than their offense. They've got 96 yards, courtesy of interceptions and fumbles, and their offense has about 31 yards. Billy Idolette is standing back on his 18 yard line. Wait for Cook to kick it away and another bad kick. The wind is fierce down there. Yeah. Just knocked it right down. Well, Plackemeyer did a pretty good job kicking into the wind. He had a 50 yarder, but Cook's effort will only travel 33 yards. Let's take a look again on Zach Taylor. It looked like his, his, his back of his neck got snapped right there. See, if Dad insult to injury, the left foot of Corey Ross inadvertently kicks him up near the face mask. Big time rush by Aaron Curry, who his coaches have told us is a, a, a monster prospect. 
for Wake Forest, the redshirt freshman who they think has a tremendous future. He laid a big lick on Zach Taylor on that play. Well, Micah Andrews is back into the game for Wake Forest. The lone running back. And he has the football. Up to almost the 30 yard line. Pick up about five on the play. No root on the stop. Here's what Wake has done so far. We have the interception for a touchdown, the fumble for a touchdown, and the interception. So it doesn't take a genius, and obviously I'm not one, to say that this is a possession that Wake Forest really needs oh, yeah. to get something done. The run game seems to have gone okay, and then they make a mistake mm -hmm. and negate whatever advances they've made. Andrew gets the first down and a couple to spare. Picks up about seven on the play. Bullock's again on the stop. He is having an outstanding game. Eight tackles already for Daniel Bullock. One thing to keep in mind, when a team is committed to their running game, as Wake Forest is, you know, since Jim Grobe's been there, they're number eight yeah. in the country in rushing over the years he's been there. When you're committed to it, you won't have to block whatever fronts you're given and whatever run blitzes you're given because you're going to see them all the time. What an emotion to keep it on the ground. Ball carried by Andrews. Andrews gets up over the 40, up to about the 41-yard line. You know, if you look at this uh, Wake Forest offense, I think you have to go back to the time that Jim Grobe was with the great Fisher DeBerry at Air Force Academy. And you can see what he did. Jim Grobe came in, and five years before, they only ran about 37% of the time. It went up, but on the other side of the football, Charles, it went down. Yeah, if you if you had put someone to sleep 20 years ago and woke them up this weekend, they wouldn't begin to imagine that Wake's the running team and Nebraska is the throwing team. There's the mark on second down, looking for Morton, and he's got it inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Morton with his second reception of the game out of Harlingen, Texas. Remember, Morton was the intended receiver on the interception that was thrown. Zach Bowman into his face mask, trying to read him, hand fighting by both of them, but he never, watch Bowman number one, never gets his hands up as Morton number 83 goes up and takes the ball almost off of Bowman's shoulder. Nice reception by Nate Morton. 34 yards on the pickup, the deepest Wake Forest has been able to get today. He's checking off again. Plenty of time, nine to snap. Not much doing for Andrews. Micah Andrews, who didn't even play football until the seventh grade, said his mom did not want him to do it. They saw his dad, but he was getting beat up pretty good. And they said, you know, I, I just don't want you doing it, young boy. And <laughs> he kind of snuck in, got a taste of it, liked it, and just kept going. He said to this day, his mom probably still doesn't want him playing football. They wore down mom's resistance yeah. with his persistence. But Corey McEwen, number 13 in red, a very active inside linebacker made that last tackle. They take the resort reverse, but... Andrews has just stood up. First hit was by McEwen, and Wally Muhammad came and finished him off. You'll hear defensive coaches talk a lot about spilling plays, meaning if you're going to miss a tackle, miss it in the right direction and spill it back to where you have help. Cord McEwen did exactly that. Wasn't able to make the tackle, but spilled the play right back inside to the defensive line where Wally Muhammad cleaned up. Third down and 10. Has some time, looking. Tries to get to the corner, rifles the pass inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line, caught by Davis, but it'll be short of the first down by about four yards. And he had to come back to try and help his quarterback out. He was beyond the first down marker, but when he saw his quarterback scrambling and in distress, he came back to make himself available, and that brought him back four yards short of the first down, setting up a field goal attempt for Wake. Sam Swank, the redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville Beach, Florida. You can see what he did last week, two or three. Ball spotted at the 25, a 35 yarder. And he doesn't get it. It started to hook, but it just didn't finish it. It'll stay wide to the right. So a lost opportunity by this Wake Forest offense. Now we talked about Nebraska five national championships. Not a bad little streak. They're 
on display here at the stadium. We'll be back. On TBS, brought to you by Dodge and by Chili's new Triple Dipper Dinner. Fourteen nothing is our score. Nebraska, not much offense. Thirty-one yards, eight. I think it's fifteen yards running the football. Girls, that's not good. They were challenged offensively, especially their line this week in practice. They said they attacked the practice field. Not showing up tonight. Not so far, and they've got to find a way to get that corrected with the schedule they still have in front of them, as well as the rest of this evening. Wake Forest doing a great job on defense until that run. Well, Ross doesn't seem to be shook up too much. He gets twelve yards on the carry. Either is Zach Taylor. He's back into the ball game. It's interesting as you saw as you heard what came out of Husker land about the game against Maine the 25 to 7 win Bill Callahan said we were just about one player away from running the ball well in that ball game as we look at total yards for the evening but as the week went on you heard from the coaching staff Dennis Wagner the offensive line coach no we must be more physical and do a better job up front maybe this series will be the start job by Aaron Curry, the redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, coming up from that linebacker spot to make the stop. But they say he's got an NFL body on him, as well as an NFL mentality. But they, what did what his coach say? He's a freak of nature? Yeah. And watch him run down Corey Ross, and Eric Berry, number 41, gave Ross nowhere to go with the footballs. He filled the hole and allowed Curry to run him down from the backside. Well, loss of one on the play, second and 12 inside of eight minutes to play here in quarter number two. They don't often let Zach Taylor audible. It appeared that he did on this play. He's looking for that slant pattern, got it complete. Right at the first down marker again to Terrence Nunn. He's becoming his go-to guy as far as throwing the football. Nunn already with a couple of catches, 13 on the pickup. <laughs> Well, Terrence Nunn has got to make up for lost time. France Hardy came from junior college with Zach Taylor. So they already had a connection. Yep. So you know what Terrence Nunn did this summer? Spent a lot of time with Zach Taylor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to say, hey, don't forget, I can run routes too. Trying to get on the same page with him. France Hardy showed the timing last week. Terrence Nunn appears to be picking it up this week. He was a highly sought after wide receiver out of Houston. Started as a true freshman last year. Ross tries to pick his way up over the 45-yard line. Jason Pratt on the first hit. He's one of the veterans back there, the only senior in that linebacking core. The starters are two redshirt freshmen and a senior. This Demon Deacon defense is doing a pretty good job. So far, they've held this Nebraska offense to only 55 yards. Dean Hood, the defense coordinator, yeah. has to be very happy with what he's seeing so far. He knows that Nebraska's much bigger up front. But he's using the linebackers to fill a lot of gaps while the defensive line is holding the point of attack. Now the splits on that defensive line are wide as Taylor drops back looking to set up a screen. They do. Oh my! That's the detonation right there. Corey Ross is leveled by Alfonso Smith. Wow. I think that Wake Forest sniffed that one out. The screens by their very nature take time to develop. I felt like this one took even a little bit longer. And Alfonso Smith came from his cornerback position, and no one from the up deep offensive line was able to hunt him up. He came underneath it. And as you expressed so eloquently, partner, yeah. detonated yeah. Corey was. Ross after the catch. How about Matt Robinson almost getting a hand on it when they floated it over his hand, the defensive end for Wake Forest. Now the good defensive lineman pursue and then come back to the ball after the ball's thrown. Matt Robinson showing that. 0 for 5 on third down conversions is 30 10 and Ross is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. He will lose about a yard. That is a good swarming defense by Wake Forest. Riley Swanson, who once again didn't play last week, he was one who had the first penetration and really disrupted things. Let's see Nebraska trying to block. Trying to get out there, unable to do so. Mulkey unable to block on number 44, Pratt. That allowed Swanson coming from the corner. And then the swarm of guys running from inside out to make the play. Nebraska, earlier in the game, I said that Nebraska's defense appeared quicker than Wake Forest offense. Yeah. The same is true for Wake Forest defense these last few series than Nebraska's offense. This time Cook gets a better kick. Ivan Lake calls a fair catch. He's just going to let it bounce. He's got to run up there and catch that. 
Yeah. He just gave up with about 10 yards Absolutely. of extra distance that he didn't need to. 42 yards on the kick. Nebraska's offense has not done anything. Wake Forest is moving the ball, but they have nothing to show for it. They trail 14 0. It's been a very windy Nebraska wind gusting to 40 miles an hour. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, two defensive touchdowns, lead it 14 0 with 4.55 left in the half. This is big for Wake Forest. We're waiting to see if they're going to play a little more up tempo the way they wanted to at the start of the game. They'll keep it on the ground. Don't you think they got to pick up the pace just a little bit? Yeah, what they told us when we met with St Steve Lobotsky, the offensive coordinator, and Coach Jim Grove, they like to be a little more up-tempo, meaning get the play called earlier, then get to the line of scrimmage and let the quarterback look over. That's Coach Lobotsky closest to you on the screen in the black shirt. You know, he wants him up there, every other survey, the defensive line, and the secondary, and then make whatever checks he needs to make to move this team along. Morton in motion. Straight ahead running. First down, Wake Forest over the 25-yard line up to the 28-yard line. Courtney Grixby on the stop. Micah Andrews just putting that head down and barreling straight ahead. Pickup of nine on the play. They'll move the chains. You know, throw away a couple of early series. Wake Forest has run the ball effectively. It's just they've always hurt themselves. Penalties, turnovers, have stopped drives. They've got to find a way to keep this drive moving. Missed the field goal last time in the red zone. Well, they have 92 yards rushing. Davis tries to do a little fancy fancy, doesn't get it. He's going to lose a bunch. Against this black shirt defense, they're better off straight ahead. Yeah. The, the speed of Nebraska will run down all these plays. They like to run counter plays. Here's the receiver going to come around and take the handoff, come this way. But watch Nebraska running it down. Bo Rood, the linebacker. Here they come. See, as he comes here, there's Rood from inside out. Everybody's coming to get him right now. If you're going to use their speed, you have to use it against them. Loss of three on the play. Is that straight ahead? They get back to the original line of scrimmage. Philip Dillard with his second stop. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. 89 yards running the football for Wake Forest in this opening half. Well, let's be clear. They can use Nebraska speed against them with misdirection, but it has to be a lot more quick hitting than what we just saw. Well, the two teams have combined one for 12 on third down. Wake Forest won a six. Benjamin Mock has streaking down the sideline. It's going to be overthrown. Pass was intended for Chris Davis. Just out of the outstretched star of Zachary Bowman, a very talented junior out of the Mexico Military Institute on the coverage. It's really hurting Wake Forest now as they're having trouble hitting the intermediate short level passes. It, yeah. it, they talked to us about this, that they're trying to improve their pass game because they're such a running team. They had almost an option mentality throwing the football, meaning it was almost feast or famine. We run it, we run it, we run it. Then we try and throw it deep. But against Nebraska tonight, they've got to hit some short intermediate routes because your percentages drop the longer you throw the football downfield. Last year on part returns, Nebraska was last in the Big 12, 107th. They've looked for the fake, but he go, Blackmar goes ahead and kicks it. The rugby kick. Yeah, Grixby fumbles it. Ball on the five, and he's going to take a hit, and that's where they're going to put it. Last week's return Grixby game is forgotten so far for Nebraska, isn't it? 67 yards on the kick. Nebraska will take over inside of three minutes to play in the half. Very much. Our score with 247 left to play in the half. Nebraska leading to 14 0 after the ninth 60 plus yard punt. Plackemeyer in his career. Nebraska will take over first and 10 on their own five yard line. Imperative make force make something happen here with Nebraska backed up. Ross. Picks up three on the play. This Wake defense has done an outstanding job in this game. 57 total yards for Nebraska in the opening half. That's not going to cut it when they get into conference play. See, at worst, they've got to force Nebraska to punt here and get good field position. But I think that if I'm Dean Hood, the defensive coordinator, I'm telling my guys, let's make a turnover happen here. That's right. We've got, we're down two. And Nebraska scored on both of theirs. Why not us? Let's go get the football. And they spent a lot of time on turnovers, trying to strip ball. Ross, up to about the 13-yard line, will be about three yards short of the first down. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig. 
Well, when this West Coast offense is in sync, it is one of consistency. What we're seeing right here is obviously one that is sputtering. Just a few moments ago, Zach Taylor was on the phone with Jay Norvell, who is the offensive coordinator up in the box. He told Zach, maintain your composure, keep your poise. Meanwhile, the offensive line coach, Dennis Wagner, has been challenging his offensive line. He feels that Wake Forest has been more physical, pushing them around, not letting Zach Taylor get into any type of a rhythm. All right, so that's a great point. And when you consider that that this uh, offensive line of Nebraska outweighs the defensive line by about 50 pounds. Yeah, it's a terrific point that Craig's made and great observations because here's here's what I've got. If Dennis Wagner's challenging his offensive line mm -hmm. now, what were they listening to all week long? Because this isn't the first time he's challenged his offensive line. Right. Nor has Bill Callahan as the play caller and the head coach. Nor has Jay Norvell as the offensive coordinator. What did Jay tell us in the meeting yesterday? We challenged them to be passionate mm -hmm. in playing the game of football. We went after them all week and we told them what we wanted done. You know, if Dennis Wagner's still having to challenge them now, that's a question mark that the Nebraska kids have to answer. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Nebraska, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the University of Nebraska or the Big 12 Conference. When you talk about the passion. He said, you know, passion and passive are next to each other in the dictionary. He wants his guys to be passionate. Don't go to that next word. Yes, and it's third and about three. Now it's normally a throwing down for Nebraska. Davis pass is complete to his favorite receiver, France Hardy. You know, that's one thing that France Hardy, who's got a heck of a set of hair there, <laughs> he, he understands these timing routes. Obviously, that takes time to understand that, but they had it all last year. Yeah, they've had that connection, and what I liked about that play was that Bill Callahan gave Zach Taylor two options, able to throw it to Hardy right there on the hookup, Kind of a little, you know, why hook up there inside, you know, a, a hook up inside the receiver. And Corey Ross floating out of the backfield gave him the second option. Or the fifth first down for Nebraska in this opening half. Ross gets up to about the 20 yard line. You know, if Wake Forest, the score stays the same, if they're shut out in the first half, it'll be only the fifth time they've been shut out in the first half in the Jim Grove era. And Wake Forest is going to call a timeout. Stick around for the Chili's halftime reporter. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action, including Darren Elliott report from the big house. Great game, Michigan and Notre Dame. Closer look at the Oregon defensive tackle, Haloti Nada. The scores and highlights from around the nation, including Adrian Peterson's big day at Oklahoma. But Steve Craig Thorpe's squad did a great job for Tulsa, holding Oklahoma for about three quarters plus. Especially if you watch college football, last week, Lawrence Maroney is still running for Minnesota against Tulsa, right? They got him out early in the third quarter before he cramped up over 200 yards. Yeah. Steve Craigthorpe and his staff, what a terrific job getting them back together and going to Norman yeah. and taking Oklahoma into the fourth quarter in that ball game. Adrian Peterson had great stats, but it took him a long time to accumulate them. I think the attrition ended up getting them. Now right now, this Nebraska offense looking for some type of sink. They wanted the aggressiveness, as we talked about in the open, on the offensive line. Charles mentioned a couple of times they've been challenged at that part, but they really haven't shown it. And these guys are running the same plays when you talk about this West Coast offense as the legends who have run this offense. The last pass completion we saw was a staple that Jerry Rice ran for the San Francisco 49ers. You can see it if you go to the Nebraska Film Library. They'll show you how he ran it and a lot of the other greats in the West Coast offense. One of the selling points if you're a quarterback and a receiver to come here. Ross tries to turn the corner. The Wake Forest defense stretches it. He'll be right at the first down marker as we head into inside of a minute and 20 to play in the first half. Are you surprised at Nebraska? I know there's a big win, but are they conservative here to end the quarter? I think they are, but I think it's a smart move because I think we go back to the offensive line. Okay, guys, we've talked about it a bunch. Take us to the half. Yeah. You know, let's see what you can do taking us into the half. We have a two-touchdown lead. Let's not do anything crazy and let Wake Forest cut this in half before we go to the locker room and regroup and make our adjustments. Well, third down and about a foot. They're one for seven on third down conversions. Ross all alone in the backfield. And he has the football. Gets to the corner, penalty flags are thrown as he gets up to the 29-yard line. And it's going to be a hold against the Cornhuskers. 
We've seen this out of Wake Forest in this ball game, hurting themselves after good gains. This time mm -hmm. it goes against Nebraska. Would have been a first down. Fourth penalty against the Huskers, three against Wake Forest in this opening half. Holding number 41 on the offense. 10 yards, repeat third down. Dane Todd, the fullback right there. See, see how he's got he's locked up? Pads, yeah. That's pretty good wrestling hold right there. <laughs> and he gets, he's got full control. Yeah, that's Greco-Roman, right? That's On your right. feet. There you go. Nothing but above the waist. He's in good shape. 15 NCAA rushing crowns for Nebraska. They led in rushing 13 times since 1980. And you can see the penalty yards between last week and this week for the Fort Huskers. It's a big third and 10. Time trying to tip away here in the first half. Less than 30 seconds. Rock. He's stringing out and he's going to be dropped and he's going to lose two more yards. And this crowd is restless. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, I was talking to one of the writers before the game. I said, what if Nebraska does not play well in the first 30 minutes? He said, I would expect the crowd's going to let them know it. And that's not normal for a Nebraska crowd to really get on their own players. Well, Fumata Thomas is down on the field. The Nebraska big left tackle, the senior out of Honolulu, Hawaii. How about the pursuit of Wake Forest yeah. all this half? We've talked about Nebraska's offensive line not getting the job done. Maybe we're not getting, giving Wake Forest enough credit on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. The defensive front outweighed by 50 pounds a man. They're holding the point of attack. Linebackers running inside out, pursuing, and hitting everything that moves. Dean Hood, the D coordinator, has to be very excited about what he's seen in the first half. Well, now it's time for the fan rant, brought to you by Kia Motors. Okay, I've only missed four home games since I came back to Lincoln in 1974. Go Big Red! 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 I love it. <laughs> okay. 270 straight yeah. sellouts. And look at that home record since 88. <laughs> Pretty good at night, too. Yes, they are. Had a streak of 42 straight winning seasons overall for a program. You know, in the 270 straight sellouts, they've got, what, 15 home losses overall yeah. in, that, in that stretch. Eight of those were the teams that finished in the top eight in the final ranking. So <laughs> yeah, if you come in to play bad. the best, you better be pretty good. Brooks Carl is fielded right at the 45-yard line. Nate Morton was that return by number Check that Willie out of left. We'll skip out of bounds after a 13-yard return. 40 yards on the kick. And Wake Forest has seven seconds on the clock, and I would suspect they're probably going to take a knee. Well, you know, I think they're going to go up top. You oh, know why? Boy. Because they took the timeout right before oh, the yeah. punt to set up the return, hoping to get something big. I think with seven seconds left, all you can do is try and go up top and get something done. And in worst-case yeah. scenario, at least try and get yourself in field goal position. Yeah, they're going to send Nate Morton wide to the right. See, they're out of timeouts. That's the problem. So it'd have to be something to the sideline. Kevin Marion in the slot. Nebraska with only three on the defensive line. There's the mock goes into the flat. Two seconds left. Pass is complete again to Nate Morton. Now we get to test Sam Swank's leg. Good job by Wake Forest. Got well, all they could get. Got out of bounds with one second to go on the clock. Wind is in their favor. And it gives Sam Swank a chance to forget the last one that he missed and give Wake Forest a little momentum going into the half. I like their strategy. The timeout, the pass, this gives them an opportunity. Well, Jim Drove saying that Sam Swank is going to be good. They like this young man's leg. And Nebraska is going to call a timeout. The redshirt freshman is just going to have to stand out there. Might as well. They had one left in their pocket. One yeah. second on the clock. Might as well use it. And remember, he missed his last one. And it was starting to, to come into the goalpost, but it just stayed wide to the right. Well, tonight's scholar athletes of the game are brought to you by TIAA Prep. From Wake Forest, it's Lewis Frazier, the big offensive tackle. He's majoring in biology, a 3.78 GPA. 
Kurt Mann right in the middle for the Nebraska offensive line. He is just a shade under 4.0. Me mechanized systems management. Okay, Charles. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me what guy. that means. No, no, you tell me. <laughs> you know what it means? No. It means something that neither one of us would be able yeah. to get into that classroom and study. No. But no. Uh, Kurt Mann, before the game, received the Jake Young Memorial Scholarship. Yeah. Which is very significant here. Jake was a two-time All-American. Was killed by a terrorist bomb in Bali a few years ago. Jake and his family presenting the award to to Kurt Mann before the game. That's that's a big time honor here at Nebraska. Well, you can see where Sam Swank is going to kick it from. It'll be a 51 yarder with the win. Good snap, good hold out of way. Got a chance, and it's good. His first 50 plus collegiate field goal as time runs out. Jim Grove's team holds Nebraska scoreless on the offensive side. The Huskers have two touchdowns courtesy of their defense. Nebraska with only 73 yards in that first half. Wake Forest with 144, and the Huskers will go in, though, courtesy of Bullocks and company with that 14-3 lead. So if you're Wake Forest, you're feeling pretty good. How about Nebraska? Here's Craig Sager with Bill Callahan. Well, Coach, you got a 14 to 3 lead, but the offense is sputtering. What adjustments do you have to make? Well, our defense is playing well. I mean, they've made some great plays out there so far in our offense. We just got to get in rhythm. We've made some plays, and it wasn't enough to sustain or contain any or maintain any consistency so far. So we got to pull it together at half. Not getting into rhythm. Is it the offensive line breaking down, or is that just not feeling comfortable? No, no, no. We, it's a combination of things right now. You know, it's overall, our overall consistency just not there just yet, so we're going to try to rectify it at half here. But the defense has pulled them out with a 14. 14 to 3 lead. Let's go back upstairs to Ron. Thanks very much, Ernie Johnson. Bill Callahan has something to talk about. And at halftime, it'll be the Chili's halftime report with Ernie Johnson in our studio. That is coming up. Now we still have a lot of football left, as they say. Nebraska had won the toss at the beginning of the game. They deferred. The Wake Forest will be going with the wind. It has died somewhat. Not quite as gusty as it was in that opening 30 minutes. And we are underway. And Nebraska will take a knee and they'll begin first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Let's check in with Craig Sager, see what Jim Grove has to say. Well, Ron, Jim Grove was very enthusiastic at halftime. He thought that that field goal definitely gave them some momentum. He said the most important thing is we're only down by 11. We think we can win the game, but Nebraska knows we can win the game as well. Trying to pump some confidence into his team. He said we gave them two gifts, two touchdowns. The defense has been playing well. He said we're in this game. We think we can win it. I agree with him. I agree with him too. They're in good <laughs> position. I mean, look at the first two of the first three possessions they have in this ball game on the two and the one yard line. And their defense picks up where they left off. But how how soon will it be? And you hope this doesn't happen. But talking to Dean Hood, the defensive coordinator, and also Coach Grove, these guys know that they've had these close games. They know they've lost them in the end. When is that going to start creeping in on them saying, well, you know, we, we've been in this position before, but we haven't finished? Well, I think it's in the back of their minds. And they've just got to continue to work to find a way to make a winning play that gets them over the hump. It won't go leave their mind until they actually pull out one of these close games. Now all the coaching staff says, we are close. We are very close. Taylor takes the pump, throws down the middle, has a man wide open. Pass is complete, intended for Grant Mulkey. Take a look at the halftime numbers. Did you post it up on that? You can see right away the rushing yards for Nebraska, only 41 yards rushing the football. Now, they averaged about 2.9 against Maine, less than that tonight. Unable to chop a, chop a hole in the defensive front of Wake Forest in their pass game, you would hope would pick up. That also has not picked up 32 yards. Zach Taylor, is he 5 of 12 in the first half? Is it victimized by a few drops along the way, too? Great sweep, Prince Hardy. Wide receivers on third down and nine. Wake Forest moving around on defense. They bring four. Now they start to drop back into the flat. Pass complete at the 33-yard line. That'll be a first down to Terrence Nunn again. Nunn's third reception of the night. Pick up a 13 on the play. And that was a nice throw. Yeah. Because he had a long way to deliver the football. All right? So you're talking about receivers, and this ball is going to come from all the way out there down here to the sideline. Look at that throw. It's a long way. He's closer to the opposite half than he was the middle of the field. 
Zach Taylor showed a lot of arm strength on that doubt route. Well, this team was ranked 81st in passing last year. Want to improve on that. The ground game starting to kick in. Corey Ross has room on the sideline. Inside the 30, inside the 20, gets down to the 10, down to the 9-yard line. Seven yards on the scamper for Corey Ross. And that betters their rushing total of the entire first half. Watch how he gets to the corner. Gets the seal up front. Matt Robinson misses him there. And then he gets to the sideline. Aaron Mason, a strong safety, unable to take him. Before G able to get him. But look out wide. Nebraska's had a proud tradition of wideouts being able to block. Isaiah Flewellen back from injury. Proves that the, the tradition continues for the Nebraska wideouts on the perimeter. Well, that puts him over 2,000 yards career rushing. Taylor goes out of the flat. That pass had a little more zip on it as Terrence Nunn again on the reception. You know, you look at that second half of the main game, and even Zach Taylor told me yesterday, he said, you know, that first half I felt good, the footwork was good. Second half, it just kind of came apart. That looked a lot better. It did, and I think that was a result of the big run by Corey Ross, the momentum lift given to the rest of the offense. But let me tell you this, Ron, anything less than six points here for Nebraska, very uh -huh. disappointing for their offense after getting down the red zone again. Again, inside the five, trips down to the four-yard line. This is a team that, you know, you think West Coast, a lot of people think that they just go out there and fling it around, but no. Bill Callahan, he, he wants balance. He says, I won't set a number on it. The system, though, is predicated on balance. Last year, 52% of their yardage gained by air. But, you know, 49% by 48% uh, by, by running the ball. That's pretty balanced. They have to get six here. They've got to learn to finish drives. They're down and four into the flag. Touchdown, Nebraska. France Hardy. His first touchdown reception as a Nebraska Cornhusker. Seven plays, they went 80 yards, and it took them just a shade over two minutes. And can you feel the gust from the exhale of this crowd here at yeah. Memorial Stadium? That felt more like it to them. Gordon Cogman gets the extra point. All set up, though, by Corey Ross's big run. Leads to the touchdown pass to France Hardy. And Nebraska has taken a 21-3 lead. Watching TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. Our score, or if you want to check out other scores, just look at the bottom of your screen and we'll be crawling them across for you. France Hardy, though, first collegiate touchdown as a Nebraska Cornhusker, but Corey Ross really set it up. Do you think that maybe Wake Forest got caught jumping around on defense? We talked about a lot of movement. You no, know, what I thought happened on the play was that they had set the corner fairly well again, held the point of attack up front, but Matt Robinson got too far upfield from the defensive end position. Uh -huh. If you get upfield like that, you've got to make the play in the backfield. If you don't, that allows him to get to the corner, and he had no support from his backside. You know, in other words, no corner support, no linebacker support. That allowed Ross to get to the sideline. Now well, Barclay's going to try to kick off the third thing again. Didn't fare too well his first time. Gets up over the 15-yard line, and after Wake Forest will take over. Let's send it to Atlanta. Here's Ernie Johnson. All right, thank you, Ron. Closing ticks of the game between South. All right, Ernie, thanks a lot. We'll be touching base with you throughout the game. Wake Forest tries the ground game. Nothing this time. They had 92 yards rushing in that opening half. How important is it for this Wake Forest off offense as far as play sequencing goes? Well, they've got to get to get to plays that give them opportunities to get to the second level. First level is the defensive line. You've got to get to the linebackers in secondary, and right now they're struggling to do that. The second thing is I see Micah Andrews is still back there. I thought Chris Barkley yeah. gave them a little more shake in the first half. And they need a guy who can make a few more people miss right now. Andrew Moss straight back. He is going to be jumped inside the five-yard line by Adam Carriker, the junior out of Kennewick, Washington. 
Here's a young man that hurt his ankle in game two last year. Never was the same. He's finally healthy, and he is going to be outstanding. Look at all the red shirts up front filling gaps. Bullock's 14, another run blitz. They can't block everyone. Allows character to come free, followed by Titus Adams, number 96. And the problem now for Wake Forest is they're backed up, and they don't have much confidence throwing the football. They're probably almost playing for a punt here. Well, 30 24, they're going to keep it on the ground. Andrews looking for some running. He gets up to the 10 yard line. So they are going to kick it away on fourth down. Be kicking with the win. But what we just saw, Ron, was synergy between the offense and the defense. The offense setting it up with a nice opening drive, scoring a touchdown, getting the crowd back into it, juicing up the defense. And now what we've seen is the defense impose their will on Wake Forest forcing them to try and play for a punt instead of going for the first down, and they'll turn it over, and it should be great field position again for the offense. Well, you see Plackemeyer had a 61-yarder early. He's had a really nice night. Terrence Nunn, back in his 40-yard line. Plackemeyer boots this one, Nunn. The return area. At the 37. He's going to go the other way. And swarmed over at the 40-yard line. 52 yards on the kick. He's only going to get two yards on the return. Great coverage by the punt by oh, Wake yeah. Forest. Because I thought he had plenty of room to operate. Well, here's the last drive by Nebraska, and it was impressive. None with the reception. Beautiful throw by Zach Taylor on the long out. None gets his start. Then Ross gets to the corner. Their senior eye back, the captain, takes it down. And then Zach Taylor with beautiful zip, perfectly thrown ball to France Hardy. His first touchdown as a, as a Nebraska Cornhusker. And that led, it, that led to their defense playing well on their series. Well, Nebraska goes back to the running game. Brandon Jackson, the sophomore out of Fort Lake, Mississippi, really showed flashes last year on how good he's going to be. He had 390 yards rushing last season. Averaged over four and a half yards a carry. That's a nice little one-two punch. And they still have Marlon Lucky, a highly sought after freshman from North Hollywood, California, on the sideline. Yeah, so had, I think they're stockpiled there at that uh, running back spot. He had 13 carries in the opening game, but we were able to attend practice on Thursday, and we noticed him in a green non-contact jersey, even though they were all in shorts. I wonder if he might be a little dinged up. You know, as a freshman, yeah. <laughs> those bumps and bruises well, accumulate a little bit. But look at that. How about that, huh? He feels a lot better already, doesn't he? <laughs> well, well, Eric Berry, the middle linebacker for Wake Forest, looked like he may have cramped up just a touch. Redshirt freshman of Suffolk, Virginia. We get our first look at Marlon Lucky. His first carries came in the game against Maine in the second half last week. He's getting his first action tonight again in the second half. Well, pretty good senior year in high school. Over 2,000 yards and 40 touchdowns. Not too shabby. A parade All-American. <laughs> I'd like to have the oxygen concession for his yeah. high school when he's running the football, right? That's right. I bet there are some long-distance jaunts involved in those accumulating those yards. Now Nebraska moving around on offense. Wake Forest counters defensively. Taylor takes the pitch, keeps it himself. Looking for a block. That's a penalty, and that's going to be a block in the back. That was so obvious. Right in front of the official. Now, if you're a quarterback, you're taking your life into your own hands. You don't want to see that. Get it called back. But what he's happy that his guy was trying to protect him but unhappy in terms of now they've got to start over from deeper in their own territory. There it is right there, J.B. You know? Phillips. I appreciate the effort, J.B., but that cost us a few yards. See, he's, he's wide open. You said it, Ron. Yeah. Too easy to spot. There was nobody else there. Well, that'll push him back a bunch. And the old adage about blocking, got to get your head in front. But because now the blocking rules have been so liberalized to, to use your hands, guys often yeah. shove and don't worry about getting the head. Because if you get your head in front, you're almost never going to get a flag. Well, that sets up a second down at 17. We played just over five minutes here in quarter number three. Lots of motion, lots of shifting in this offense of Bill Callahan. Corey Ross now becomes a receiver. They try that quick timing pattern. It's going to be picked off. Nope, they're saying it's incomplete. They hit the ground again. Well, the officials are looking at each other. Hang on here. Now the referee's going to come over. They're going to talk about it. 
I didn't think it hit the ground. Did you, Charles? I wasn't sure if it did or not because the way balls can bounce off of this turf. Let's take That's a look. Right. Inside pattern. You got to be courageous in this offense. Balls behind. Bounces. Yeah, I think it hit the ground. See yeah, where it hit his it. foot and you saw the yeah. black come up? I think with a great catch off of that, if it didn't hit the ground, it should be an interception. But I think they're going to determine that it did off of his foot. They hit it back of his foot or hit the ground? See, you see the they black the coming up? No, oh, they're going to call it an interception. Are they calling it an interception? Hit the back of his foot. Well, we haven't had a replay yet in our first game, so maybe we'll have one in our second game. Bill Callahan wants to talk about it. Once again, he cannot call, hey, I want a replay. No, and, and, and they've he's the, looking for his flag, isn't he? The he's coaches the voted in the Big 12 11 to 1 against the use of the head coach having a flag to, to do it. The one who voted for the flag, Bill Callahan. He's the only guy who's used to it having coached in the NFL where you can challenge it. That and now are. the officials are going down to take a look because the replay guy buzzed him on the field. That's how the, the protocol goes. You can see it. That's a tough angle to see, but he gets buzzed on the field, the referee. See, and right there, you see, see where the ball bounces up? Now, it's two things. One, the ball could have caused the black to pop up that I saw, or the foot of the receiver. Very difficult to tell who caused what. It's got to be indisputable. Well, that looks like it hits the ground there. See, I think it hit the ground, but is that indisputable to our man in the replay booth? We'll soon find out. Well, there's one man looking at it, making the decision. Bill Callahan's just going to have to wait. The official on the field, on a headset with him. Up in the booth. How big would this be if it goes oh, in yeah. Wake's favor? They needed, they needed a play like this. Well, let's take a look at it one more time. Once again, it's being reviewed. Oh, boy, that's going to be close. That hit. Uh, hit that hit. Hit the, hit the ground. Did you see where it hit? Yeah. That ball hit the ground. Yeah. So if they if they've got that look, I think that the ball will go. You know, it will not be an interception. Well, we're going to take a break. 9:49 to the third. We're waiting for the results of our first challenge of the year. We'll be back. Well, Callahan, Jim Grobe waiting the decision. It has come down, and let's listen. After review. After review. Ball's team to have hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. Third down and 17 on the 33. Well, it remained third and 17, but uh, I think that's the correct call. The key is they got it right. That's Thanks, why absolutely. replay has come into the college game so that no one goes home at night saying, boy, did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? They nailed it. Yeah. That last look that we saw, our guys gave us a terrific look at it. No doubt about it. The ball hit his foot, hit the ground, and bounced up. Well, they've been waiting a long time. Let's see if they can hold Nebraska again. The Cornhuskers only 3 of 10 on third down. They need 17. They need to get to midfield. See if Wake Forest decides to lay back a little to take the screen game out of this play. They rush five. Here comes the blitz. Taylor's hit as he throws. Caught. No, incomplete. The diving attempt by France Hardy again. I tell you, just Taylor got rid of that just in time because he got leveled. Once again from the back side. That was number six, Dominic Anderson, a backup yeah. strong safety, hitting Zach Taylor. Forcing the incompletion as he tried to hook up with his favorite target from Butler Community College, France Hardy. Well, Nebraska will be kicking into that win with 9.42. You can see what Sam Cook has done this, this evening. Just about 35 yards a kick, as long as 42. And this one's a good one. Gets outside the 20, to the 25, turns the corner, gets up to the 35-yard line before he's run out of bounds. We could hear the pads popping up here on that. 48 yards on the kick, 15 on the return. College football on TBS, brought to you by Lincoln, Nebraska. It was 14 to three at halftime. Nebraska led. Nebraska with an impressive drive to start the second half. Now Wake has the football. Hard Belton just joins Benjamin Mock in the backfield. Mock has some running room. Still holding on to the football. Throws this prayer up, and it won't be answered by anyone. I certainly hope that was his intention. I hope so, too. <laughs> to throw it out of bounds because go back to the first quarter when he threw the ill-advised pass that was picked off by Corey McEwen and returned for a touchdown. 
That appeared to be another one. I kept thinking, get out of bounds. Ola Dag Daganduro putting the pressure on him. Yeah. A freshman defensive lineman. So Steve Lebotsky there, the offensive coordinator. The third year, nice coordinator. And that's just a drop pass intended for Kevin Marion, the sophomore out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Box pass intended for the well, fans, it's now time for the Aflac trivia question. And our question is, when is the last time Nebraska started with five home games? We'll give you the answer in just a couple of minutes. So when we have the Ducks on TBS, that's going to be appropriate. That's it? right. Next week. Next week. Third down and ten now for Wake Forest. The offense stalling here in the second half. Mock, a little swing pass off to the side. Belton. Got some running room, crosses our Napa first and 10 line. Up to about the 47 yard line. Logan Duro again on the stop. Like the play and Richard Belton. He's a, he's a red shirt freshman who got a lot of work in the spring because Damon McWhite was out with a knee injury, his backup fullback. He ended up running with the first unit, the second unit, and they said he got better every day. The best combo fullback Wake has had in the Jim Grobe era. They, they're real excited about his future. I don't blame him. Off again, scrambling, looking, spinning away. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll lose about a yard out of play. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson, a little Ohio State, Texas. Yeah, Ron, Ohio State equalizing things at the horseshoe. Look at this pass by Troy Smith to San Antonio Holmes. Just as Rick started, played two series, Smith came on. Now a lot of people are picking on Texas to win the Big 12 South. Penalty flag is thrown. Pass is complete to Nate Morton. Block pass complete to number eight. Someone picking them to win the Nate national Morton. title. That's Penalty a tough place to play, play, though, in Columbus. Yeah. How, how about Tackle Texas? Two of the last three games they've played yeah. against traditional great programs that they'd never met before. Michigan in the Rose amazing? Bowl. Yeah. And now Ohio State. They'd never met before those games. Those two <laughs> storied programs. Unbelievable. Now the penalty is going to go against Nebraska. Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator. John Blake behind him, the former Offsides, Oklahoma head coach. Number 44 on the defense. Five yards, still second down. Great defensive player for Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. Coach with Coach Switzer at, with the Dallas Cowboys. And when you talk about recruiting here in Nebraska, a lot of people say John Blake's the guy who helped Nebraska get this outstanding recruiting class this year. He gets a lot of credit for the a, a, a relentless recruiter. Yeah. He's made great inroads in a lot of places for the Huskers. Good defensive line coach, too. Second and seven. Off just tucks it. Got the corner. Has some room. First down. Wait for us. Down to the 42 yard line. Knocked out of bounds. Number 25, Blake Again, this is a design play. Watch him fake it over there. No intention of throwing it. Look at Belton, 35, out front, the fullback. Got just enough of Rude, 51, to allow Mock to get to the corner. Tiki had to make the stop. They are down at the 42-yard line. We are at the eight-minute mark of quarter number three. Right four is very much in this football game. Mock, straight back. Look out, and he is going to be dropped at the 49-yard line. Corey McEwen is having an outstanding game. Nine tackles tonight. He's got a sack. He's got the interception for a touchdown. He's been all over the field. Richard Belton, number 35, the fullback. He got everyone. He got the guys in the middle, but on the outside, Corey McEwen came around Lewis Frazier, number 78. He's our scholar athlete of the game for Wake Forest. Unable to block McEwen on that play. Big sack for the black shirt defense. Ah, boy, you're way off schedule now. It's second and 19. Off looking for that little swing pass. Instead, he goes over the middle. Pass is complete. Really idle let. Does not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Able to pick up about four on the play. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Nepa. They've got about 15 yards to go before they cross that Napa first and 10 line inside of seven minutes here in the third. The last pass we saw was the counter. Remember Belton on the swing for the first down? They faked it, then threw it inside to Idolet. Oh, 
Wow. Fakes left. Looking down the middle for someone. Goes to the left side. Wide open overthrows out of left. There was no one within 15 yards of him. He talked about play sequencing earlier. We've seen it. The swing pass to Belton got him the first down, remember, on third and ten. Right. They came back, faked it to Belton on the last play, threw it inside to Idolette. Now they're faking the swing again. Watch the motion as, they come, as, as the receiver comes in motion. He's swinging here. They fake that, and then they're looking right here for Idolette. And he overthrows a wide open target. Another decent drive sputters out, and Wake will have to give up the football. Harris Nutter has one return for about three yards, standing back. Blackemeyer again, kicking with the win. This is a high spiraling kick. Hits at the nine. Wake tries to stop it at the one, but it'll go into the end zone. Well, they had it covered pretty good. And the kick a, covered 47 yards. Let a good opportunity get away to down it at the one or two yard line. And that's where Nebraska will take over. First and 10 from their own 20. They scored to start the third. That's where we are right now. The Huskers lead 21 to 3. 37th of the year. He leads the majors. Got to be looking at him hard as an MVP in the National League. I think so. First and 10 for Nebraska. Taylor out of the flat. Pass is incomplete. Drop. Prince Hardy had it, couldn't hold on to it. He's dropped a couple tonight. Now, if you're Wake Forest, Jim Grobe told us yesterday that he thinks lack of leadership and general fatigue have hurt them. This is the time of the game that his team is only down, you know, by 18 points. You need to have some leadership, and you need to forget about the fatigue. Great recognition. The defensive line in the game for right now for Wake Forest, all backup players. So I'm wondering if Nebraska is going to spot that from the booth and try and go right at those guys and see if they're ready to go. No pressure, passes tipped again and caught at the 24-yard line. Great recognition by Brandon Jackson. And his pass caught by number 32, Brandon Jackson. I think Riley Swanson may have gotten a hand on it. Watch Swanson, number seven, break on the football and go to break up the pattern. What saves Nebraska is that Brandon Jackson was running his pass route, a swing route out of the backfield, and just happened to be Brandon on the spot That's right. <laughs> and saved the play for Nebraska, making it third and five instead of third and ten. Just over the outstretched hands of Jason Pratt also. Taylor, that's flat pattern. Caught. France up to the 40-yard line. France Hardy. That'll be a first down for Nebraska as we close in on five and a half left in the third. Pick up a 14 on the play. You talk about the timing pattern. That's one of them. Yeah, and you mentioned fatigue couple plays ago. What Jim Grove likes to do is roll linemen and linebackers in and out of the game. He does the same thing with his offensive line, trying to avoid the fatigue because he feels that he has more talented players than at any time since he's been at Wake Forest. And that's what he's continued to do. Every play, new guys running onto the field. And more depth. Taylor three-step drop with a pump. Throws, pass. Oh, what a catch by Grant Mulkey. He was just about hogtied by Alfonso Smith, who was breaking on the football, but Mulkey somehow was able to hold on to it for a pickup of 25. That's a sensational catch by Grant Mulkey because of the concentration. Alfonso Smith came underneath, thinking he was going to break up the pass. Once he didn't get the football, Mulkey, look at the concentration, stays with it, absorbs the big hit, and gives Nebraska a big first down. Just put on scholarship this fall, he earned it with that catch. He's a safety in high school, they call him Gutty. Go to there. Again, Taylor into the flat to France Hardy. Kevin Patterson on the coverage. Hardy's fourth catch of the night. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig. Well, Charles was talking about the rolling linebackers, all the substitutions for Wake Forest. John Abadi, we told you earlier, he was dressed, wanted to play. He ran onto the field. The coaching staff looked up and saw him out there and said, no, no, and they sent him back to the sidelines. I think they're going to have to take his helmet away to keep him off the field. Sigs, they might toss you his helmet to take with yeah. you to keep, to keep it from going in the game. Well, and Lucky gets his first carry. Does not get it on second down and four. It'll be about, uh, we'll see, about a yard and a half short. Following up on Craig's report, I admire John Abadi's spirit and wanting to play, but the staff 
knows it's a long season, and they need him That's for the right. long haul. He probably should not have played against Vanderbilt. Already had a tweaked hamstring, but the opening game wanted to be out there. That set him back. They need to go ahead and keep him off the field, get him healthy, and have him ready for the ACC season. Now Nebraska has about doubled their first half offensive production here in the third. They're moving the football now. Into the flat, inside the 25 to the 24. That'll be a first down. Again, Mulkey taking a hit. Mulkey played high school ball for Mickey Finley. Remember Clint Finley? Yes. Not a bad little player himself down there in Arlington, Texas. Not bad at all. And this is the first time I felt, you know, they had the last touchdown, uh, touchdown on, on the drive with the long run by Ross. This first time they've really been in sync, I think, the Nebraska offense in a long, long time in this ball game. Well, Aaron Curry has a little cramps. Well, our Aflac trivia question just a couple of moments ago, we gave it to you. When is the last time Nebraska started with five home games, what they're doing this year? Well, the answer is 1975. 1975. How about that? 10-0 start. Ended up losing their final two games, including the bowl game. Lost to Oklahoma to end the regular season. Lost in the Fiesta Bowl to a fine Arizona State team coached That's by right. Frank Cush. Mm -hmm. And remember, a lot of people don't remember this. The Fiesta Bowl was essentially created for Arizona, Arizona State. State. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, because they were finding hard, it's hard for them to find a place to go play. They were in whack. Well, you take a look at their schedule, and it's pretty good to start out, although you have to, you know, take Texas Tech out here. Then they go to Baylor and Missouri. Hey, they, Iowa State won big today against uh, Iowa. What, what a great job by Dan McCartney down there. At Oklahoma on the 29th. Oh, boy, that, that, there have been some classic battles there. Just doesn't feel right that they don't play every year, does I it? I know. I understand it because of scheduling, not criticizing, just saying it just doesn't seem right that they don't get together every year. Well, you look at that schedule, and you'd have to say that, you know, Bill Callahan and his team struggled last year. They got to go at least four and one in those opening five. Yeah, they, 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 they need to make hay while they have the opportunity, and it won't be easy. Pitt with Pitt's coming in here 0 and 2 and breathing fire. And we've already seen Iowa State, big win today. Texas Tech last year, Rock, Nebraska. Ross just carrying bodies. Now, Ross is only five foot six. Yeah, that's a strong five. You six. got that right. A former high school wide receiver. The fifth in the Big 12 in rushing last year. And he played hurt a lot of last season, too. Had an injured toe and continued to run over a thousand yards. Yeah. Good receiver. And how about the respect his team has for him? Voted team captain for this year, his senior year. Yeah, went over 2,000 yards for his career tonight. And you can see, how about that? Just about doubling it up. Hello. Good adjustments at the half. Good yep. wake-up call for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Only six and seven on this drive. Completes another pass to Ross. Ross last year was a pretty good receiver in his own right. Had 21 receptions, most by a running back in a decade. Their timing is so much better in this half. Some misdirection, offensive line holding out the defense, the defenders, hitting Corey Ross, letting him turn to the corner and get upfield. Zach Taylor seems a lot more comfortable. He's moving, he's actually on the move oh, yeah. on his last few passes, which is one of the things people were concerned about with him. Could he throw on the move? He's showing better footwork here in the second half than he did against Maine. And a lot of people were going to try to force him to move this year. And I think that'll still be the strategy. You have to continue to prove it. Rock, bacon and bacon inside the five down of the three-yard line. Patrick G holding on for dear life. Now Ross is showing a little confidence. Is this Wake Forest defensive line getting a little winded right now? Well, I think that, you know, the whole Wake Forest defense is, you know how much time they've had to spend out there and here in the second half. And that was a that was an explosive run by Corey Ross because he took Patrick G with him and drove him backwards. G wasn't able to stand him up and stop him at the point of contact. Well, Prince Hardy will go in this slot. Two wide receivers to the left. Ross alone in the backfield. He starts moving. Oh, Taylor's been hot this drive. Looking, looking, floating wide open in the end zone. Pick, almost picked off again. Riley Swanson has done a nice job tonight. He knows that's two he should have had. You know that horseshoe that Nebraska touches as yeah. they come out? It worked to Zach, Zach Taylor's advantage here. Floated it. Way too much, didn't have enough on it, and Riley Swanson almost got it. And look at Zach, he knows how fortunate he is right now. Ooh, boy. An ill-advised pass. 
You know, they touch this horseshoe before they come rolling out. Everyone touches it, the lucky horseshoe for Nebraska before they come out on the uh, come out onto the turf to play. <laughs> Zach Taylor had it in his hip pocket on that pass. Yeah, he did. Third down and goal for the four. Play action, looking, going into the end zone again. Hit incomplete out of the end zone. Again, a couple of white jerseys right on the point of attack. Josh Gaddis was right there. The junior out of Durham, North Carolina. He was fortunate again because it was great coverage. Gaddis on the short guy sees the pass and is able to fall back into coverage. And again, Nebraska fortunate. He's not, he did not come down with it because it still leaves the Huskers with a chance for a field goal attempt. They could have come up totally empty on that drive. Jordan Congdon is going to have it placed right at about the 12 yard line. It'll be about a 21 22 yarder. Good snap, good hold, good kick. 24 to 3 with 141 left to play in quarter number three on Cogden's field goal. Well, tonight's looking back, creating a future is brought to you by the personal advisors of Ameriprise Financial. What's next? Well, here's what's next. How about the great eyebacks of Nebraska? Great running backs, Mike Rozier. Yeah, we saw Johnny Rogers on the initial. We're talking about backs. He was a wing back. But boy, he could carry it, he could catch it. I'm on green. And right now, Corey Ross. Over 2,000 yards for his career here as the starting eye back at Nebraska. Plenty of great runners. And just because of time, yeah. <laughs> we're not able to show they so many so others. Many. Remember Jeff Kenny? That's Jeff right. Davis came in and played well. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Darren Diedrich in recent years always had great running backs here at Nebraska. And you see I, Isaiah Moses hip. Yeah, oh, I am hip. Walk on. One of the famous walk ons here. Yeah, they know how to get it done here. Look at that. 222 academic All-Americans in all sports. I believe That's it's right. 83 of those are football. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've liked about getting ready for this game, the academic records of both schools. That's right. We're talking about, when we say student athlete, it's now an oxymoron with these two programs. It's real. Well, they make the guys study, that's for sure. Very important, in fact, both coaches agree on that. Jim Grobe has a philosophy. He says, I recruit guys, and I tell them you got three things to worry about. Character, academics, and then football. Yeah, in amazing order. how it comes in third, right? Yeah. Now Cogden, who had the field goal, tied a freshman record last week for field goals in the game. He had four. Kicking into the win. And it's going to be Barclay at the 10. He hasn't played a whole lot of tailback and hasn't done all that great on kickoff either. Tyler Fisher out of stop. One thing Nebraska does do is they honor those who are academic All-Americans. And downstairs, right below us, on the ground level of the press box, you see everybody's picture who has been there. And it's like a who's who. I don't care what sport you walk in. It's <laughs> golf, it's baseball, football, doesn't matter. Track and field, it's like walking in history back there. And, and that's, the, that's a great point, too, that they actually honor them. It's not just lip service about academics. Yeah. They, they prove it and show everyone how important it is to their program. And they're going with the win for about a minute and 43. Mock throws, passes caught somehow by Chris Davis. How did he get that ball away? Chris Davis did a little shoestring act. Yeah, but he lost two on the play. Watch this. Watch this. Benjamin Mock wants to go screen left, but Adam Carricker had taken that away, and with Jay Moore all over him, drops below sidearm and flings it and completes the pass to Chris Davis coming inside. Little Kent to Colby. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be old to understand that one. And those patent leather shoes. There you go. Lost pass is tipped, and that'll fall incomplete. It was tipped though by Blake Tietke. He's had a pretty good game before the walkout. Chris Davis was the intended receiver. Here's Tietke. First start was in Maine. Earned a scholarship, as Charles mentioned early on. Was an outstanding special teams player. This kid's just smart, and he earns his way into the starting position. What's amazing, and the stat that I found most amazing coming into this year, he had one career tackle before the main yeah. game. How about that? And he had four in that game. And look at the conversions and how they've gone up for Nebraska in the second half on third down. Wake Forest still trying to find their way. They're down at 11. Mock shakes one tackle. Looking, looking, throwing, hoping, doesn't get it incomplete. 
Good coverage again by Zachary Bowman. An outstanding junior college transfer. They are very high on this young man at quarterback. Morton was the intended receiver. And hoping was the correct word, partner, yeah. because the passes that Benjamin Mock has been throwing recently have been more a hope and a prayer because he just has not finding anyone open. He's taking a beating back in the pocket as he tries to move. Still no one's coming open, trying to make something happen downfield. A number of those balls have been up for grabs. Terrence Nunn now back inside his 30 yard line. Ryan Plackemeyer has done a great job. All time Wake Forest leader in punts. He's going to need a hot <laughs> soak after tonight. Yeah, he and Benjamin Mock are going to share, share a cold tub for their, their, their bodies tonight. Plackemeyer's leg, Mock's whole body. Well, that time he only gets a 38 yarder. Fair catch by number 84, Grant Mulkey. Now CSTV all. Oh. Just double tuning us. Is it one guy? Tell you, we're liking everybody every week, are we? <laughs> Last week was Coach Callahan. Hello, Dinata. That'll be coming up next week right here on TBS. We're going to see an outstanding team in Oregon and a, and, a, and a team that everybody's afraid to play in the offseason. Pat Hill does such a good job at Fresno State. He says, I'll take anybody on anywhere. Yeah, and they're, they're, you know, they will be ranked when we see them next week and probably move up a little bit in the rankings. So I'm quite sure that they'll win this win tonight in their ball game. I think they're taking on Weber State. We've got a chance for a really big time game next week. And that's going to probably end quarter number three. So Bill Callahan's team is up 14 to nothing, 14 to three at halftime. They hang 10 more on the board. Very impressive opening drive of quarter number three. And they will head to the final 15 minutes, leading 24 to three. That's good. I tell you, they pushed Wake Forest backwards on offense. Minus 12 yards in that third quarter while Nebraska hung 160 on them. A much better effort. Pass incomplete. Tipped. Looks like Brian Andrews got a piece of that. And you can see the it's a pretty good second half. Four total yards for Wake Forest. Nebraska 160. 33 so far in the ballgame. The value of adjustments and getting settled. Mm -hmm. Nebraska taking full advantage. I have to say this Wake Forest team is still is extremely young. Tied for second as far as the few seniors even played. In college football, passes tipped again. How many passes have Wake Forest tipped and almost brought down? This time it's Brian Andrews. I don't have an exact number, but That's I'm thinking bunch. three or four right now that I can quickly recall. Yeah. And two in a row. <laughs> That's right. Andrews, a communication and a journalism major and minor. Big, strong young man. Just a junior, 6'5", 263 pounds, and Nebraska's going to kick it away. They'll be kicking with the win. Really idle up. Back on his 11 yard or 16 yard line. Well, Cook gets the foot into this one. Idle up will take it. He wants to return it. He is going to be dropped at the seven yard line. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. From Southern Miss had a, got a good coach down there. Jeff Bauer, Bauer did a great job. job. And considering all they've been through, probably a little bit cathartic to actually be on the field playing. Mm -hmm. well, Chris Barkley, who did not play in quarter number three, is in the ballgame now. And now he's on the turf. Daniel Bullock, who had an outstanding first half, another tackle. He's up to 10. Had nine of those in the first 30 minutes. How about the defensive front of Nebraska? They just cover everything up, and the Bullocks just comes free in the gap and makes the tackle. Look at that. See that? Everything's covered, and then Bullocks coming from a strong safety position. The gap is open. He charges through and makes the play. Pickup of one. Benjamin Mock not had a good second half. His pass is caught at the 23 yard line by Chris Davis. That's his third reception tonight. This young man's got some big play potential. Only senior wide receiver. Picked up 14 on that play. Not exactly the sure-handed approach. Watch. See? Whoa. <laughs> but he gets the catch. Yeah. Good call by the officials. It never hit the ground. But Chris Davis celebrating more out of relief <laughs> than actual skill in coming down with the football. No style points in football. Keep an eye on the ground. 
Barclay gets another first down as he gets up to the 35-yard line. And Bullock's with his 11th stop of the night. This is what Wake Forest was so successful doing in that first 30 minutes. They were running the football. And Barclay gives them just that little extra. I love Micah Andrews. I mean, this is, should not be construed as a knock. But Barclay seems to be able to find those little gaps and holes where none seem to exist. That's right. <laughs> He's got that extra gear we were talking about. On first and ten, Mark rolling, looking, firing, pass, caught right on the sideline, right at the 47 and a half yard line. Pickup of 12 on the play. That's just a good job keeping the feet inside for Chris Davis. And I thought for a minute he might run out of real estate. Great job by Chris Davis sensing where he was and the reason that he's out of, he stepped out of bounds after he secured the catch. This time he didn't need his legs. I sold the ball with his hands and brought it in. That's more like it for a wide receiver. Plenty of time to snap it. Nebraska brings seven. Barclay cuts through the first wave, crosses midfield down to the 48-yard line. This Nebraska team has won 113 consecutive games when they've held opponents under 10 points. CSTV All Access. Listen to live games, view press conferences, coaches' shows, exclusive athlete features, and more, all on your computer. All you have to do is go to CSTV.com to sign up. Second down and six. 13 minutes left in the third. Barkley spinning. There's the moves we talked about early. Down to the 45-yard line. Pick up by four on the play. Oh, Rude on the stop. Yeah, they're not booing him. Of course, his brother Barrett Rude did such a great job for this Nebraska Cornhusker team. A lot more laid back than, than Barrett. But he never lacked confidence. Bo has never lacked confidence. Ever since he's been here. And Barrett Moore, the big thumper, Bo, Bo Moore, the rangy guy, but the coaches say he's becoming more physical all the time. And they love what he's doing for them right now. Barclay tripped up, trying to get to that Napa first and ten line. But Keevan Smith, haven't called his name a whole lot tonight. That's his second tackle of the evening. That'll bring up a third down, or fourth down, I should say, and they're going to call it about one. Jim Grove, you got to go for it, don't you? And they're going to bring the chains in and show him. First. But yeah. I don't think there's any question right now on the Wake Forest sideline. They're not waiting to see. They're yeah. deciding what play they want to run for fourth down. And if they're fortunate enough to have the first down, they'll go to their first down play. You see Wake Forest brought their own ball. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. Yeah, you never know if Nebraska is going to supply. Yeah, them, right? that's right. You never know. Well, you can see it's, it's at least a yard. Well, tomorrow TNT presents the NBA Players Hurricane Relief Game as the NBA's biggest stars come out to support the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Don't miss Kobe, LeBron, and the game's greatest players as they do their part to join in the healing and give you an opportunity to give as well. That'll be tomorrow night, 11 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, only on TNT. Fourth down and every bit of a yard. Two tight ends, Zach Hellman, John Tarashinsky are in. Nothing doing. Barclay is going to lose a yard, and Nebraska will take over. But even Smith led the charge. Very easy to second guess. Wake Forest went to their strength, the running game. Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, just decided to sell out and bring everyone. And, and just totally disregarded the idea that Wake Forest may throw the football. I think if they faked it inside and threw it, Kevin Costro was saying, go ahead. I dare you. But he loaded up for the run, and it paid off in a big way for Nebraska. And they'll take over inside of 12 minutes left in the ballgame. Well, Nebraska's just going to go back to work for Corey Ross. Just up to the 49-yard line. Pick up of about three on the play. Jeremy Thompson coming up to make the stop from that defensive end spot. Here's a defensive end that caught the coach's eye. The big number 98 at 6'5", 250 pounds. They said he's an intelligent player, and he's getting better every week. And he played last year probably about, what, 230 pounds? Yeah, he's put on some pounds. <laughs> so he's really, he's really starting to bulk up and 
you'll see his growth as he continues to mature. Good weight room, the good training table. A fine player already. J.B. Phillips switches over to the right side at tight end. Baylor, plenty of time. He's going for the home run ball down the field. Hit incomplete. Alfonso Smith on the coverage. Terrence Nunn, the intended receiver. We talked about the Nebraska rushing titles early on in the game, and that's was their forte early on. But look how the gap is closing now, becoming more and more of a balanced team. Yeah, the pass line is the white line. The run line is the red line. And with Bill Callahan and this West Coast offense, you mentioned it earlier, partner, balance is the key word in this offense. The best West Coast offense has always had guys who could run the football. Oh, the the flag. Oh, early. Yeah, it was a, a lot early. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could have seen that. I was just about to say how Alfonso Smith played a pretty good game considering he's a redshirt freshman. He's been awesome. He's been aggressive. He's been on, on the play. He read that one right away and just got in too quickly. Yeah. You notice he never retreated in his back pedal, read the out cut, and ran to it. Unfortunately, got there a count or two or three <laughs> too early. Yeah. The defense, spot foul, automatic, first down. Well, Jim Grove is high on this young man. Got some good reps last year as he was taking his red shirts here. They yeah, like both cornerbacks. Yeah, you talk about Alfonso Smith, his nickname is Prime. They never sent him to scout team last year. They let him stay with the varsity That's guys right. to get reps, to get ready. Almost took the red shirt off of him about midseason. That first and 10, Taylor again going for the home run. Frank Hardy, did he get it? No, penalty flag is thrown. This time it's Riley Swanson, the victim. And that's going to move him again. Look, I'm fighting inside. See the arms? Seven on seven. That's Both of them fair. fighting. Number 22 on the defense. Oh, it's number 22. Yards, automatic. Call it on Josh Gaddis. That must have happened oh, somewhere yeah. else inside, or they just got the numbers mixed up. That happens running. occasionally. Well, the there's ball Gattis. Was, there's nobody near him. You know, the ball, the play was seven on seven. And frankly, they were both fighting each other from my point of view. I'm not sure that's a pass interference. I don't think it was. But what I like is Bill Callahan's aggressiveness and play calling right now. You know, the way they were going inside, arm on arm, hand on, on pads, they should just let that go. But what Bill Callahan's doing is pushing the offense right now. Pushing the deep ball because he knows that his quarterback likes to throw it. Yeah, Taylor looking for it again. The deep out. Intercepted by Gaddis. Looking for some type of running room. Still on his feet. Gets up to midfield before he's brought out of bounds. Now we talked a few moments ago how many passes had Wake Forest tipped and they might have come down with it. They finally got one. Love what Josh Gaddis has done. Because this is the second time he's retreated and read the quarterback and made a play on the ball. This time, he came down with the football. And Wake Forest is in business trying to get back into this ball game. Now, yeah, part of the sellout crowd of over 73,000. They actually announced it at 77. That's more than a sellout. Most of them have stayed. Gaddis on a 41-yard return after the pick. The third interception of the year thrown by Taylor. D'Angelo Bryant now is in. In the backfield, Johnny Benjamin Mock. Mock keeps it. Look. Oh, no. Mock rolled out. They were looking for him. Yeah, they used Nate Morton on the reverse pass. We saw on film last year against Boston College, Nate Morton come around on a reverse and throw a long touchdown pass. What's happening? Morton's going to come here. Mock's going to hand off, and he's going to come out here and be the intended receiver. See, and that's who Morton's looking for. Almost nailed him. Nate Morton, a former quarterback himself, <laughs> throws a nice ball. A little razzle dazzle, 10.35 to play in the ball game. And I liked it during that timeout. All the weight players got together. They're saying, hey, we need to put some points on the board here. They're not giving up. Tip. Intercepted by Nebraska. Stuart Bradley. Adam Carroll.
Parker looked like he got the big hand on it. Tipped it right to Bradley, who took it the rest of the way. Look to the right side of your screen. 90 gets the paw up, as you call, partner. Bradley there. McEwen 13, the initial block. And then Stuart Bradley, the former high school rugby player, a former walk-on has earned a scholarship, runs into the end zone. Bill Callahan celebrating with John Blake, the defensive line coach, the third touchdown score by the defense tonight of Nebraska. Uh, 21 of their points have come courtesy of the defense, but Bradley, who played high school quarterback, he was a defensive back, a kickoff returner, said his goal was to be a great leader this year. That helps. Nebraska leads 31 to 3, 10 23 to play in the ballgame. 21 points courtesy of their defense. They led 14 to 3 at halftime. And their defense comes through. They had a touchdown last week on an interception return by Bo Rood. This week, they got 21 more points, but you look at it, you say, wait a minute, they got four field goals last week, only one offensive touchdown this week. Score looks good, but. Started out the second half exactly as you would like to on offense, but haven't been able to sustain it. Zach Taylor had chances to miss, could throw another touchdown pass in the end zone, nearly picked off twice. Changed ends for the fourth quarter, was picked off going to the other end after some aggressive play calling and pushing it downfield. Well, Barclay is going to take this right at about the two-yard line. Brooks is up over the 20 to the 23-yard line, his best return of the evening. Let's listen in to the radio call of the last touchdown by Jim Rose of Nebraska. line awake in its own territory three-step drop this ball is picked off in the air by new bradley now the far sideline 30 25 20 15 10 5 touchdown nebraska my oh my pretty hefty return by bradley well he's going to try it again one game is going to be stacked up and they're actually going to lose about four yards on the play I think when you look at Wake Forest, they're down 14 to three. They had the wind at one point. They had an opportunity and they were moving the ball. Obviously, Jim Grove's team was running the ball very effectively. But, uh, you know, they just could not put points on the board. I mean, they only have uh, 101 yards rushing now for the ball game. Too many fits and starts, you know, yeah. stops and starts. They'd start something, look pretty good, yeah. hurt themselves with penalties or miscues. And drive with fizzle. Only nine yards rushing prior to that play for Wake Forest here in the second half. D'Angelo Bryant, not much running room. The, 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 good, the, the good thing about being committed to the run for Wake Forest is we look at the last time he had two interception returns for a touchdown against Michigan State in 1996. And tonight, McEwen and Bradley, the two linebackers, coupled with Bo Rude, three linebacker returns for touchdowns in the first two weeks of the season. But it's good to be committed to the run, but when you're down 31 to three, yeah. and you don't have that type of a pass game, it makes your quarterback a sitting duck. Benjamin Mock looking, throwing, pass is going to be incomplete. We're going to have an off or a pass interference penalty called. Courtney Grigsby was trying to hang out to dear life and just got tangled up. Now this Nebraska defense coming off their worst defensive stats since 1948. They have played well Pass this year. Pass interference, number two on the defense. 15 yards, automatic, first down. So Grixby's number two in red. See how he makes to the left of the screen right there? See yeah. how he gets tangled up with him? Just kind of stumbles into him. He had the perfect coverage, but in the scramble, he just kind of ran up the back of Nate Morton, number 83. Let's see what the Nebraska Cornhuskers did in 2003. They set a school record of 47 takeaways. Not quite that last year. On the ground. Ball As you mentioned, when you're down this Ryan. much and there's 847, I guess all you're trying to do is just get your offense to make some, some reps right now. D'Angelo Bryant on the carry, a senior out of New Ellerton, South Carolina. Remember the 2003 defense was coordinated by Bo Pelini. Mm -hmm. And then they had to make the change where Kevin Cosgrove came in and became the third coordinator in three years for Nebraska. 
Not as easy to maintain continuity that way. Look who's there again. I'll tell you, Daniel Bullock has been all over the place. 12 tackles tonight. And I'm sure Brother Josh is watching as he's ready to play for the New Orleans Saints tomorrow. Daniel is doing well. Yeah, he's a great player, but he has to credit his defensive mates with some of his opportunities. The way the defense is designed, you take a gap, you take a man, fill the spaces, allow your strong safety and linebackers to run free. Daniel Bullock's unblocked. He's making some great plays. I'll tell you, this black shirt defense is doing a great job, and again, Bullock's is right there. He and Corey McEwen in the middle there have done an outstanding job for this black shirt defense. Bullock's is playing better now than he even was last year, and that was a pretty decent year. You can see just how talented he is. Had five interceptions last year for 187 yards, which is a school record. Seven career interceptions for him. He's going to go high in the draft. And it was up to his brother. Yeah, really. New Orleans Saints will be calling his name on draft day. Fourth down, Wake's going to go for it. A little over a yard. Can run for it if he hurries. He does, gets to midfield. That'll be a first down. Mock the ball, Good carrier. job by Benjamin Mock. This is a gutty young man. Played for his father, Mike, at Kenton Senior High down, School, down, Kenton, down. Ohio. They had a wide open offense. No backs, five wide receivers, no huddle. He had to do everything. He even called his own plays, and they would work it out as we look at his stats for the game tonight. He'd work it out with his father during the week, set the game plan, and then the game was his once the whistle blew on Friday nights. Well, he did pretty well because he had two high school state titles. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. EJ. Hey, Ron, I'm going to give you two for the price of one here. Oregon State's Alexis Cerna for the chance to win the game against Boise State. And it's straight through the middle. 30 to 27, the Beavers are 2-0. Meantime, Arizona State and LSU. It's LSU's home game, but they moved it to Tempe, Arizona. And on the board first, the Sun Devils, Sam Keller to Jamal Lewis for the early Arizona State lead. Thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Mott goes upstairs. That pass is going to be tipped away. Intended for Davis. Andrew Shanley on the coverage. Sam Keller's a pretty good quarterback for Arizona State. Dirk Cutter's not going to miss a beat. And he was the MVP of the Sun Bowl last year when Andrew Walter couldn't play in that game. So he got an early start toward taking over this team for this year. And how about Ernie? How about EJ? Number one, his heart's back to normal because Georgia survived yeah. in South Carolina. <laughs> but number two, he gave the two for the price of one, setting up our game in two weeks. Two weeks. Oregon State hosting Arizona State. How about EJ? Oh, man. Well, Mike Riley's hoping something good happens. We've got uh, flags all over the place. Mike Riley hoping something good happens at Oregon State. And 2-0 and is a good start for him. Well, it's outstanding. Prior to the snap, contact offsides. Number 66 on the defense. Five yards, still third down. Now we talk about next week. College football on TBS will come your way 7 o'clock Eastern time as number 24 Fresno State goes duck hunting in Oregon where Kelly Clemens puts the O in Oregon. And you can see what he did last week. He's got a pretty good arm on himself. Yes, Paul Pinniger. He's going to be about a three-year starter oh, yeah. for Fresno State. Done a terrific job there for Pat Hill and his Bulldogs. They should come in undefeated and ranked in that ball game. Ryan is tied up on third down and three. He's going to lose a bundle. And we close in on six minutes to play in the ball game. And the simple fact is, because Wake Forest is not a good throwing team, Kevin Cosgrove is just committed to stopping the run mm -hmm. and realizes that his secondary downfield can cover what, whatever comes their way. You know, he's not worried about doubling anyone. Right. He doesn't have to pay special attention to a receiver. So he says, all right, I'm going to sick eight at you, cover with three in the secondary. And good luck trying to throw it over me if you decide to do so. And then Terrence Nunn standing back on his 20 yard line. Plackemeyer again into the rim. And boy, he booms another. This young man's got quite a leg. That'll be a 47 yard field goal. 
Well, there is a Heisman Trophy room as you would expect here at Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium. Three Heisman Trophy winners throw in five national titles, and they've got some hardware downstairs. Yeah, the offensive line in Nebraska outweighs them by about 50 pounds per man. And in the first half, Wake appeared to be the team averaging 305 pounds. But in the second half, the Nebraska offensive line started to take charge and created a few gaps for their eye backs, such as Corey Ross, number four. Now Brandon Jackson is going to get a little more playing time. Seen him a couple of times today. Alfonso Smith, he's got a bright future at Wake Forest. Jim Grove does too. I mean, this this team's going to be all right. As Nebraska tries to find themselves, and you can see the rushing yards in the second half doubling up the first half. And boy, they really shut down Wake in the second half, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. You get less than 20 yards running the football in the second half, you're probably not going to win. Taylor still in the football game, throws it out of the flat to France Hardy, incomplete. You surprised if Taylor's still in? Not really, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why. The timing still hasn't been terrific for Nebraska. No. And I know that you're balancing the injury factor that could kick in versus how they're playing, but you just have to know Bill Callahan is not thrilled by what he's seen tonight. He's giving the offense one another opportunity to try and put something together before this night's over. Really, in the second half, what have they had? One good drive. Just one good drive. Just paid off. The other ones have, have ended in either an interception or <laughs> just turning it over to yeah. Wake Forest. Well, the offense has not been dominant in any one area. And the play clock went down to zero. They're going to back it up. On the offense, five yards, still third down. It'll be third down and 14 then for Zach Taylor. He's frustrated at himself, and he looked. You, you, you saw him go. My fault. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Napa. And the first and 10 line sitting at the 30-yard line. The line of scrimmage is at the 14. Or at the 16, I should say. Right now he's going to take a time now oh, because he's having trouble getting the call signaled into him. Bill Callahan saying, that's okay. All right. I'd much rather you come over here. Let's get it right. Love to end the night with a good break. Good drive. Now they've got 441 to work with. They're leading 31 to 3. Nebraska hoping to go 2 and 0 on the year. Uh, coaches were new to the players. Players new to the coaches. New system. So some of that was understandable, and of course this year we hope things will fall into place a little bit better. He obviously uh, knows what he's doing. I think he's a, a very uh, disciplined, very hard-working coach, and uh, and so we hope that, that things work out. Osborne was on campus this afternoon supporting his teammates' mentoring program. However, he is not at the game and said fulfilling a commitment to the King Corn Parade in Plattsmith, Nebraska. Osborne is currently serving the U.S. House of Representatives as a candidate for governor of Nebraska. I don't know about you, Ron, but I think there's more votes to be had here at Memorial <laughs> Stadium than there is the King Corn Parade. Just stand outside and shake hands. <laughs> On third down, Taylor steps up in a pocket, shows a little arm, and doesn't get it complete. France Hardy had it and dropped it. <laughs> Why not? I mean, just, just stand outside, you know, get a little boot, maybe. Craig, you keep up, you'll end up being his campaign manager. He's yeah. going to hear that and say, you know, that's a great idea. Although you're probably thinking if you're Tom Osborne, everyone that's in here, that's probably a vote you've got already. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's probably right. Get to reach out right. somewhere. <laughs> now Nebraska will be forced to kick it away. And you see Sam Cook's numbers tonight. Has two kids, Mary. That keeps you going. Line drive kick. I to let Baffy up, letting it go, and again it costs him yards. Second time he's done it. That'll go down to the eight-yard line. 76 yards on the kick. That'll work. Now at the beginning of the game, we told you a couple of keys for Wake Forest. Let's update you on that. Yeah, we talked about them needing a quick start. They didn't have any points in the first quarter, and they gave up the two returns, interception to fumble return by the defense, down 14. Get off the field on defense. 13 first downs, 5 of 15 on third down for Nebraska. Really not bad, 5 of 15. They've done fairly well with that. 
run the ball, control the clock. They had 92 rush yards in the first half. The second half has really shut them down. The defense of Nebraska has been the huge difference in this ball game. Three touchdowns for the Black Shirts. Less than 20 yards running in the second half prior to that play. There's Barclay back into the lineup. Gets up over to the 13-yard line. Can't wait for us now. We'll have to regroup. And then we'll head home. Benjamin Mock looking down the middle, has a man wide open and overthrows him, intended for Chris Davis. Now we look at Wake Forest keys, let's look at Nebraska's keys and update them on how Charles did on it. Well, we said that they had to stop the rush game for Wake Forest. Not too shabby after the first half, 92 yards in the first half, but even then it was only about three yards to carry, so it wasn't bad at all. Stay on schedule on offense, six yards on first down. That's pretty good. That's a good average. 51% completion percentage. Zach Taylor is going to want to up that to 60 in the West Coast offense. The return game has been a huge surprise in the punt returns. 198 yards in punt returns against Maine. Minus one tonight. That's been a very big surprise to me. Three to snap it. Nebraska's showing blitz. They bust it with Barclay. Looking for some running room, gets the first down as he goes up over the 30-yard line to the 32-yard line. As you mentioned, Pitt comes in next week for Nebraska. East Carolina will make their way to Wake Forest next week, take out the Demon Deacons. Nebraska taking the opportunity now to play a lot of youngsters or people who don't play very much. And that right there, that's a Mike Stunts, I believe. Number 16, a former quarterback turned into a free safety. But you know what his real claim to fame is? Tell me. His girlfriend was Tommy Lee's tutor when he was oh, here on campus. that's right. That's right. <laughs> She's got a special place in heaven. <laughs> that's well, going to be a late. penalty. A little yeah. late hit. Really didn't Barry mean Turner much Barry Turner got him. Yeah, yeah, Barry Turner got a little overexcited. But boy, are they high on this. They true love freshman him. out of Antioch, Texas. They love him. You know, his game, he hasn't played that much tonight. It, it, watch, yeah. just a little overzealous After the here. Play, Personal foul, number 99, on the defense, 15 yards, automatic, first down. And they're going to take him out and talk to him a little bit. But you know why he hasn't been much of a factor tonight or we haven't seen much? Because Wake Forest doesn't throw the football. Yeah. He's a young kid, still has to get stronger, but his forte is speed rushing off the edge. And he got a sack in his first game against Maine, who threw the ball a little bit more than Wake Forest has tonight. I got a feeling John Blake's going to talk to him a little bit, too. Yeah, he'll have a little chat with him. A little him. chat with him. But I bet he'll come back into the line. Just tune him up a little bit. Let him know that's not acceptable. Send him back out there and let him get some experience. 6'3", 245. He is going to be a monster in a couple of years. Yeah, didn't, didn't Bill Callahan's eyes light up when we talked about Barry Turner? Oh, yeah. So he's <laughs> one of the best he's ever seen. That's pretty hefty comment. Mock looking. Now he's running away from the red jersey. Davis had it and dropped it. Andy Kadavi on the, on the coverage. You guys can smile now. 2-0, defense 21 points, offense 10 points. That's the offensive line there. They're smiling and enjoying the win. But I don't know how much they're going to enjoy film session. I'm telling you, they challenged them last week. What are they going to do this week? I'm going to know they're going to still do. The good thing about Bill Callahan, the tone he sets with his staff, mm -hmm. is teaching, teaching, teaching. You know, they're not out for a whole lot of blame and criticism. Just let's find ways to get better and hope this team will respond in kind. Matt Moore makes a nice reception on the Benjamin Mock uh, pass. Moore's had a pretty good game tonight. And Morton, he's got four catches. Over 50 yards. Even threw a pass. Mm -hmm. Tried to complete one to his quarterback, Benjamin Mock. And it's first and 10 on the 31. A quick little slant it again, works again, and again it's Nate Morton. Stretches for the Napa first and 10 line. Fisher's hanging on. Now stick around for the Dodge Post Game Report. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action, including the day's top games. Darren 
Elliott will report from Michigan and scores from around the nation. All coming up on the Dodge post game report with Ernie. Have that exciting Georgia game. We'll have highlights of that, I'm sure. <laughs> and Texas, Ohio State. Benjamin Mock scrambling. He has a man inside the 10. Again, it's dropped. Boy, he's been a victim of a couple of those tonight. Morton got hit by Tyler Fisher right as he caught the ball and let it go. Benjamin Mock has a lot of moxie as a quarterback. As they continue to improve their pass game, that can only help them because everyone loads up against the run. They've got to find a way to loosen up defenses and give this quarterback a chance to set up and throw the football. You remember last year he was Ben Mock. Yeah. But his mom oh, said, you mom know, and grandma said no. Mom said, if I wanted to name you Ben, <laughs> right? If I wanted to call you Ben, I would have named you Ben. I named you Benjamin. So Mrs. Mock, we hope we've done okay for you tonight. Yes, we were, we, we were going to call him Benjamin the whole time. You're darn right. Charles doesn't like to be called Chuck, so we appreciate that. Yeah, my mom said the same thing. Yeah, Did really. I name you that? <laughs> Walk on second and ten. Look out. And he is going to take a seat back at the 39 yard line. Wally Mohammed showing that speed again. And up until that, Wake Forest was leading in just about every offensive statistic. First down, total yards, everything. Watch Wally Muhammad come free. Benjamin Mock trying to get away, but Muhammad's on him too quickly. And then at the end, Muhammad with a little uppercut to celebrate. He has those boxing roots, his father. Fought yeah. for the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship at one point against Lightning Jeff Lampkin. Back in 1989. That's the fifth sack, by the way, by the Blackshirt defense. Screen. Off to the side. Nothing doing. The Blackshirt surround him. No gain on the play. Richard Belton tried to find some type of running room. That'll bring up a fourth down and a bundle again. Lock inside of 125. Look like Adam Ickes on the play, the reserve linebacker who graduated this summer. One of the good, one of the benefits of graduating in the in the summertime. Yeah. He got to miss practice that day to graduate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Coach, uh, you know I got a little graduation ceremony. Is it possible? Well, you can miss the morning session. Yeah, you got to get back by <laughs> afternoon. Turn the cap and got in. <laughs> Moss looking on fourth down. Pass again dropped. Right in and out of the hands again of Chris Davis. You know, when you talk to the coaches, they said, well, Davis, I'd let a lot of them had slick hands last year. They got them again this year. The slick hands, and they need them to block better on the perimeter to help these runners get downfield and gain more yardage. We are in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Sellout crowd, the 270th on hand to see the Nebraska Cornhuskers take on Wake Forest. We've got 55 seconds left in the final quarter. Nebraska leads 31 to 3, led 14 to 3 at halftime. Their defense has been outstanding, accounting for 21 points. I'm with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. I'm Ron Thule. Glad you're with us tonight. Next week, of course, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We'll be making our way to Oregon. For Oregon and Fresno State. That's going to be an old-fashioned shootout. And Nebraska is just going to take a knee and let the clock go down. But Bill Callahan will go to 2-0. and Wake Forest will fall Jim to 0-2. First time they've North been in that position in the Jim Grove era. Jim Janelle from Omaha. Please to the Northwest First Aid Station. Thank you. What I like is seeing Jim, seeing Bill Callahan shaking hands, smiling, enjoying the victory. He knows there's a lot to work on, but that comes another day. You've got to enjoy these opportunities. Yeah. You're only going to play 11 weeks. You know, you shouldn't walk up the field all down and disconsolate about what didn't happen. Take the positive. That's a win. Well, that's, a, that's a decent Wake Forest team they beat tonight, too. 114 consecutive wins for Nebraska when opponents are under 10. The last time Wake Forest failed to score a touchdown was back in 2000 versus Florida State. It's the first time in the Jim Grove era. The Bill Callahan squad wins it 31 to 3 is the final. You've been watching TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. We'll be back next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern when number 24 Fresno State heads north to face the Pac-10 Oregon Ducks. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Lincoln. The final score again, 31-3. Ernie Johnson standing by with the Dodge postgame report. <laughs>